call the meeting to order. And first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. I think being that we have some individuals here that may or may not, is it um, agenda related or non agenda related, do you think? Not. The majority not. is not. So, I don't know about Josh. So it looks like we're waiting for some of the appointments, anyways. So why don't we just, if everybody's good with it, we'll just move the public comment to the first order of business. Mm -hmm. Move to approve as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. So we'll open it up for public comment. So I guess we're all here. Could you just say your name just in case the select board doesn't Hale. know you? Thank you. Tori. Tori we, uh, most of us are from Crypto now. Um, and there's some heavy heroin and crack being sold up there. Can't hear you, please. <laughs> are we waiting? No, can you? Oh, all right. So they're selling heroin and crack up on Christian Hill. Um, they're parked on the side of the roads using needles, smoking it. Um, by the time you call the state police, it's half hour, 45 minutes Thanks. to wait. Uh, Royalton won't respond. Um, Oscar is short on time down in Royalton, so he has no time for us in Bethel. Oh, yeah, Jordan, yeah, that's fine. And she right here, so if you guys keep your in for the, um, for the minutes. Um, and we're left, you know, taking care of it ourselves. And at this point, they're parking on my property. They're using on my property, and I'm chasing them off my property because there's nobody to call. So with kids and no other choice, I'm chasing people down Christian Hill at 60 miles an hour trying to catch up with them. Because what else is there to do? Just let them sit on my lawn and shoot heroin and take what they need? I, I don't know. But I've sat with Oscar. I've sat with the state police. We have the case on file. Um, and their hands are tied with what they're able to do and what we're willing to provide them to do it. So you said uh, that one of your suggestions or that we had, that you had talked about was um, your one of your ideas you want to present to the select board was hiring a full time police officer and that you had I had told you that now is a good time to bring that up because of budget discussion. So yeah, one or two or somebody to run full time, some part time help, whether it be the sheriff's department or Royalton, but Royalton's understaffed. So. I don't see how you could hire them to help when Oscar can't. Oscar's offered to be full time in Bethel. Yep, he has mentioned it that he'd be willing to do that if price. we open it up. Yeah, uh, sounds like less than what the sheriff was asking for. Yeah. Um. But it seems like we got to do something. They're cutting off catalytic converters right in town. There's people poaching up and down the hills, riding around with guns out the windows, shooting animals, and then leaving them there. Yeah. And the skate park was vandalized on Thursday night, Wednesday or Thursday, Wednesday night. Thursday, Broke into this town, you know, the town garage and stole a truck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The crime seems to be excelling. Yeah. And uh, the speed the car was still by. Mm -hmm. The speed of people. So the speed thing from months ago has been picked up that it's the drug addicts going up and visiting. And yeah. I've been down to the house and gone in and watched a lady putting needles in her purse, trying to hide them as I confronted all of them with what's going on and the, the rate of speed they're traveling. But now they're parking on our lawns and I've almost been driven off the road many times. I think we people. can all attest to that. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been passed on the bridge issues. that goes over the interstate mm -hmm. uh, with a 20-foot trailer behind my truck right there. Um, and then watch the red RAV4 pull yeah, directly orange. into the driveway. Or orange, sorry. I'm slightly colorblind. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, we just feel we need more policing in, okay. the town, we, in the town of Bethel. We need it to be under control because we, it's getting out of control. 
We did have a speeding issue too during the road construction of Christian Hill. It was, you know, a lot of speeding. And so we moved, you know, sign up there and stuff. But no, no, I don't think it has. It's it's everywhere. It's Camp Brook. It's every, you know, everywhere. But um, so you would like to see at least one, if not two, full time officers or full time and a part time so that I mean, we can provide them. Part time and somebody to be around. Okay. Somebody that can respond. I mean, ultimately, it's a, you know, we're we're here for Christian Hill. Christian Hill is not the only problem. Like no. you said, they speed on Camp Brook, they speed on Gilead. This is this is just a, it's a localized situation of a larger problem that we have in town. And ultimately, a police force that can respond, that can, you know, be there in a timely manner is. Well, we had, we had, uh, Chris and I had, had a conversation with the Windsor County Sheriff before, right after he was elected, before he'd made, um, you know, actually taken over, taken over. And we were kind of waiting to see what he was going to do, how much staffing he was going to have, what he was going to have for, um, how many officers he was going to put through the academy, that sort of thing to kind of see. Cause then once after the election, Windsor County was okay, but you guys probably saw that Orange County, that sheriff, left and then all these people left so we were trying to wait to kind of see there was rumor windsor county might take over parts of orange and so we've certainly been kind of keeping um you know an eye on it and um but it's absolutely something that i'm happy to look into for budget season and to see what's you know what's available what would the cost be that sort of thing and present it to the select board when we do budgets i think our first budget discussion meeting will be december 13th so i'm happy to is they're under the influence and they're just everywhere. Yep. Absolutely. So is it gonna take one of our kids being killed? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a legitimate concern. A lot of people are, you know, out there drinking and driving or under, you know, now that the state's legalized, you know, marijuana, that's an issue for some people while driving. And so it's a big issue everywhere, you know, and um, not just Bethel you know, all over, I'm sure all residents of Christian Hill agree that speeding and issues are a problem up there. So, um, and like you said, it's not just there. I had someone in here today talking to me about Dart Hill, just saying how it's crazy, especially with the whole Camp Brook Road, people doing the detour. And he said, boy, if it was summertime, I'd be out there with my checkered flag because they're flying. And then they realize the, the crest of the hill and the, there's a car coming. So it it's, it's everywhere. And it's it's not it's not a new problem. I went to high, I went to high school here. I've driven fast on the roads. I'll yeah. be perfectly <laughs> honest. But it is something that maybe I just realize it more as I get older. That seems to be getting a little bit more out of control. Because mm -hmm. well, um, it's a different kind. And well. it's a different kind. Mm -hmm. What we're experiencing anyway up there is a different kind than just speeding cars going by. Um, right. That, it's it's different when it's a bunch of kids going into a parking lot and learning how to drive in the snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But like, I don't want my kids to walk on. Christian Hill at all because no. can't. Yeah. I don't like to walk on Christian Hill. No. We've stopped. No, no. We don't. It's not safe anymore. The kids don't ride bikes. Everyone's. I won't yeah. let them ride. Won't let them ride through town. What that tube's going on? Yes. I think the cars were trying to go even faster <laughs> to watch it go. Oh, that's yeah. probably because true. Because we sit right in our door. In yes. our, yeah, we actually heard that someone said that on on uh, Church Street too. So we finally said it so that over a certain speed it won't recognize the number so that people would stop doing that but you know i raised my kids on a dirt road and and in a different county and but it was the same thing you know there's high speed traffic and they didn't ride their bikes we had to put their bikes in the car and take them to the school for heaven's sake so it's but you're right it's not a you know it's it's not a new problem but it's gotten worse but i mean i'm happy to look into it for the select board if they want and i think some of the the challenges that we started to dabble in in um uh, in this last budget season and um I, I think the challenges that we have in town is um as we started looking into it last year is there there's a piece of the town that doesn't want to see a full-time police force um but does want a presence right so um and then there's there's a piece of town that would like to see more police presence uh, but maybe not want to pay for a police presence as we, so we started looking at this last budget season was, you know, we, we were always used to, if you go back, like, you know, a half a dozen years ago, we had about a $20,000 budget for a part-time constable. Right. And in those years, we used to share a constable with other towns. So it was not only beneficial, but cost effective for our town to share with Rochester and Hancock most of the time. Um, 
but that was kind of a perfect world. It worked really well, but you know, it just had the right person. But now um, we don't have that ability to share resources. Um, the um, the cost. Uh, well, everybody's short on on certified officers, and and again, that's the next layer of the cake. Is used to be almost anybody could be a constable, you know, and now, <laughs> but <laughs> so, it, but now you have to not only go to a letter of accreditation, but now you're basically to the officer grade um, of schooling um, and the responsibilities of that the municipality takes under is, is a lot more now. Um, so like we were talking about the, the kind of the joke at the board used to be, you know, people in town wanted to see 20 hours worth of, work being done in the community right and that's what we used to budget was 20 hours of the work a week but that 20 hours now could be you know 18 hours of paperwork and two hours of community policing because the you know the red tape you know if if you pull somebody over speeding and let's say they were drunk you know now the amount of paperwork that goes involved in that you could have just killed your 20 hours for your week because then you're going to make a court you know the, all those things so so what we started talking about as a board was you know how could we still get that 20 hours but make it more of a realistic 20 hours um so we you know we moved the the budget um up to seventy thousand. i think is what we have it at uh, we also looked at some other options which was um, the sheriff's department, we met with the sheriff's department to go over what, you know, there was a new sheriff that was elected. What might that look like if we were to uh, either maybe somehow split a sheriff with another community, which that wasn't an option. That was something that we asked for, but it wasn't an option at that time. 65. Or a full-time officer, which at that time we were, you know, told that that would be, in a, you know, $125,000 a year type mm -hmm. area. Um, so and that wasn't buying us full time coverage. And that wasn't even necessarily finding a person. Like that's like budget you have it in there, but these departments are so short, like they're still trying to staff themselves before they want to have somebody be in Bethel or, you know, um, just like Royalton. We've we've talked to Royalton about the possibility of them helping out, but they've been consistently short on one of their three officers that they like to have on board. Yeah. Um, so let's just assume that we were able to take care of the having somebody in the town, right? Then the next level that we have is what can that individual do? So like in your case, so I think if we did have this, again, my opinion, if we did have somebody more full-time in the town, I think that you have the ability to go after the speed and and, and maybe some of the non-recreational type habits that people have maybe like you know graffiti and things like that you can police that better but the challenge you still have is when it comes into like the issue that you guys have up in uh, christian hill and it's starting to spread everywhere in vermont is when you get into the drugs and private property and things like that you know the the ability to control that is is kind of out of our control um you and know, it doesn't the, give you full time. Like, yeah, you know, people, I mean, nobody's on 24 so, seven. So when but. we get into like the drug related issues, it's way bigger than us. It's, you know, no, I'm, I'm, and, and trust me, I'd like to go bang down doors and, and kick everybody out of town for that. But the challenge we have, like not just in Bethel, but the challenge we have in Vermont is the judicial system has put us in such a position that one, the officers can't go and do that. But even if they did, they were going to be back out in the street tomorrow. And, you know, it's just a vicious circle that we have right now. And you're starting to see that come into all the communities of you're seeing more homelessness. Homelessness, if you go anywhere up by the Burlington area, is a, a show. I mean, you would think that it was Halloween up there every day. Um, I mean, it is everywhere. I mean, if you ever went to Church Street back in the old days, Church Street was this nice little boutiques and people outside eating and, and shopping and and now it's just people doing drugs and alcohol right in broad daylight, no police presence, you know, people don't even go shop on that street anymore. And that's the way it's getting. And it's starting to leach into all this. Burlington's opened up the safe space. So now, I'll be. Right. So what I'm saying I is. So. so I think I heard something about that. Yeah. So, so the layers that we have, the, the challenges we have here in Buffalo is one, I, I think the, the challenges put budget aside is finding a person. 
because everybody is is uh, competing for the same people. So, Oscar's offer to come over. He mentioned that, but as I said to them, you know, Oscars too, you'd still have to put mm -hmm. it out and see for an applicants and see who else right. you got. And he also has a, you know, it'd hard, be hard for him to leave probably Loretta while she was shorthanded, but it's still something we can look at. We can also talk to the Windsor County Sheriff and see what his situation is as far as doing contract work and how many more hours we could get. And But it's just, just going to take us a little time to look into it to see who has what available. But certainly you're right. There's safe space in Burlington. People, you know, with opening up different, you know, places for people to safely use drugs. Also, you know, addressing homeless and maybe even you see more um, uh, health workers and, um, you know, working in Burlington and different things too, trying to deal with I mean, I think that all the, obviously all of people can get Narcan for free. Um, also, all the ambulances have Narcan. We don't have policing, then why are our fire department having to save these people? I'm not sure that our fire department actually has Narcan. Yes. They do. I didn't know I'd have to ask, Ron. I didn't, huh? I was not aware that they had Narcan. Okay, so you know. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that they did. But, I mean, residents, any person, I could carry Narcan, you could carry, you know, we all could carry Narcan. Um, I know in some places they give it away, but, so it's certainly a conversation we're not going to solve tonight, but we could look into. To, to Chris's point, I, I understand, you know, we're limited by what they can do. Um, it's not a full time, you can just lock them up, you know, they have, they're going to continue to do it until a larger investigation, something happens, they're going to put them in for a night, they're going to let them out. But, and maybe this is naive of me to think because I'm old school, but if you're constantly singled out and repeatedly caught doing it, oh, locked up for a night back in, eventually you're going to become a pariah in the town and it's going to be known not just to those living on the hill and experience on a daily basis, but the entire town as a whole is going to understand more of what they're driving around, not necessarily by their house. So even if it is just here and there, but constantly having that single arrest there out the next day or repeating that action is going to educate people in a way that, you know, even us being here tonight may not because there's not the turnout. So just, we understand that it's not snap of the fingers, problem right. solved, but opening the eyes, getting it out there, having somebody that can do that stuff to put it out there to people. I mean, I'm not about driving people away, but if that's the type of stuff you're doing, I'm totally about making you a pariah, singling you out, and go. We don't need it. And I'm about the kids. So, it's not fair. Yeah. They can't do anything. So that's that's how we feel. Uh, two things. One, just an FYI, uh, to have 24-hour coverage takes four people, four employees. Just, Just... An FYI. So if we were to have a uh, force or a police department that provided 24-hour coverage, we're talking about at least four, All right? Uh, so when we, when we start thinking of dollars to ask the town, that's something to keep in mind. About speeding, I know that there are... Um, stoplight cameras probably yeah sure in bigger places yeah absolutely we have uh speed signs and it seems to me that electronically it's not hard to say if you are speeding or going over x speed and we've got a camera on that puppy okay. it can it can take your picture now we've got the license number and that doesn't require a police officer to file the right, speeding just for them to issue the ticket i guess i don't i don't know i've, I've never right. seen it in a small so yeah i don't know i i know we have the red we can find out i don't know I just but think i think it's it i'm suggesting that that's something that could be looked into mm -hmm. um sure well out of town i mean like even if you put it here in town once we already had out i mean i'll be honest i don't always do 25 i'm not a perfect little saint here but first time I get a speeding ticket that came from that that's attached to a post, you're not going to speed pass anymore. What do you do when you buy it? 
you're by it. The thing with a police officer and having representation is that you don't know where they're going to be and you don't know when they're going to be there. So uh, that is something that those electronics will not offer to us that, yeah, you may put it up there for a little while, but how many of them do you need for throughout the town? You know, if, if you have a, a 40 hour police department, we're not 24 hour, it's not every day, but sometimes they work Saturdays and have Tuesdays off, or you don't know when they're going to be, where they're going to be, be random schedule that is, you yeah, can't I, plan I on. I appreciate that. And that's, uh, I just think it's, it's something that we might want to look into as a stopgap. Oh, yeah. uh, have something that goes around town because we have several of these spaces yeah. Yeah. Uh, that we know about. So, uh, uh, Will it take the rear license plate? Because I have a Vermont Strong on the front. So if it's only going to get my front, it's not going to um, get me. That's a good point. We, we can, could look into it. We could look into it. Yeah. Yep. The other thing, too, is to we would have to look into is that Bethel's always had constable so i you know i don't know what it would take to actually form a police department if we had to do something special or have a vote or i don't know oh something to look into so even like you said if, you know a form of police department is going to be quite extensive and expensive and you're probably not going to have a lot of support from the town for it but even a deputy. having a constable more i did i see a constable a deputy constable somebody that is there was, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I used to see Oscar sitting here by the town hall and he would, and I have not seen the constable Lots. car that we purchased. And yeah. when he first started, he wasn't, he was working part-time somewhere else and part-time here. Right. And then once he took a full-time job, which made sense, he'd like the rest of us needed benefits and a full-time, right. you know, check. So, um, but yeah, so it's certainly. And that's the problem we, we have is, it, is we have part-time constables. So and we only get their hours when they're available. And what happens is both of them work for other identities that never give them any free time. So like Oscar's always busy in Royalton and Justin's always busy with the Sheriff's Department in Rutland because they can't find enough people. We have put it out to try and find other individuals that want to be constables and we have not had any other takers. Um, and then you have to go through the part-time academy at um yeah. you have to go through the part-time police academy so i think what we did last last year is we we've kind of increased our budget about as high as you can go for a part-time person to try to attract somebody to come in and and um because the, the next thing was we weren't paying enough so we in our basically in our last budget last year is we we kept the 20 hours a week but we increased the pay so that we could attract somebody you know $30 an hour type deal to come in and do some, some work. Um, but we haven't seen this year, any extra no. time. We, we have, we have it budgeted. It's there, but we're not using it because nobody will come and do the work for us. So I think that at this point, the next, the next piece, at least the way I see it, the next piece is either to go um, to the sheriff's and, and get a full-time person to come in and do the sheriff's department piece or to do the, police department ourselves now you get into the whole police department yourselves it just comes with a whole you know it's like gene was saying it's not just you know multiple individuals but it it just comes with the whole liability of the town has to take on for everything you know um a building and cruisers yeah and i mean there's insurance and retirements yeah. and there's all kinds so of stuff that comes with it but and offer the sheriff's office and them to come over I mean, sometimes, sometimes what we do, um, well, we're getting ready to kick off the budget season. So we'll start like we always do. We'll, we start playing around with the numbers of the budget. We start kicking around other ideas of like just last year, we talked about the same exact thing, you know, and we did increase that. Um, so there's, there's the opportunity of maybe looking at increasing it again to make some sort of deal with a sheriff's department or something, or if we just to give you your options, if let's say the select board agreed not to go with a full-time individual, you still as, as um, taxpayers of the town, you have the ability to petition to put something on, on the budget. So I'm just making this up. So let's say we decided not to do anything different than we're always doing. And I don't know for. Make a petition vote. They could also stand know, up for, a town meeting. For and 20 add signatures, you could get signatures and get something added to the budget. So let's say you wanted a full-time, uh, um, deputy from 
Windsor County at one hundred twenty five thousand dollars a year, you could get that added to the. They could also the just warrant. stand up at town meeting, and when we talk about the general fund budget, they could say they they could yeah. make an amendment to the budget, and but we can certainly keep in the loop. But like I said, we're going to have the first budget meeting on December thirteenth, and we have um you know I think we meet the thirteenth and. Uh, no, excuse me, the 18th and the following Monday, right in a row, right? Because of um, Christmas. So we actually meet back to back. And so, so like but, 125 for one sheriff from Windsor County. Yeah. And it wasn't even full time. It wasn't guaranteed yeah. the same person, but it was yeah. going to give us X amount of hours. That would give you one that. person each, well, each day. So yeah. it doesn't, it's not 24 hour service. No, it would give you one person in town each day. Um, I and thought there, the that Oscar has a volunteer to, to run the show for a hundred. Yeah. Oh, hundred. I didn't know what his number was. I just knew we had one in mind. But yeah. <laughs> a little lower, a little higher, but yeah. I mean, that's still 25 grand plus cheaper. Yeah. I, I can also I talk to the sheriffs. In whatever budget it takes yeah. to put a cop on our troops. Yeah. Just, you would just you have to. Back, told me half a million dollars, all they'll get to it. Yeah. You just need to come to the meetings and be sure you're there at town meeting. So the, and, but we can keep you in the loop or uh, read the minutes, attend the select board meetings as we go through budget season. And, you know, we have an agenda. We meet every other Monday, but we'll meet back to back in December and just follow that. We post them on front porch forum when we're going to meet, you can call the town office, email me, email Kelly, email anybody. And you could keep an eye on where the, you know, when we're talking about budgets and, and come in and, and see where we're at. We'll have more information then. Certainly, um, I'm going to be away for a week, and but I can reach out to some people when I get back and see what we got for numbers and we'll to awesome in the budget. A lot of times we start with a bigger budget and then kind of look at it under a microscope. But so it's certainly a bigger number we can toss in there and see where we end up. Additionally, what's, yeah. it, what's it take to, to give um, or the run for a scene? Oh boy, hang around for hey, a Hang around. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's um this it changed because before you just stood up at town meeting and and you got appointed from the floor, but they changed it last year. So you, now you have to um get a petition with signatures and have a consent of candidate. But if you talk to Pam, she could tell you, I can't remember the exact number of signatures that you need, but then you just come in and you can um run for whatever term is open whether it, generally we have a two-year and a three-year term available and talk to Pam she'll tell you um what the petition needs to look like and then you fill out a consent of candidate which tells you you know how you want your name on the ballot and then use front porch forum base whatever to get people you know to let them know you're running two, two people are running a uh, jeans term is up whether he's running out and dill and Lindley's seat is up. She's as a two year, so there's a two year and a three year seat um, that people can run for this year. Um, and just a quick thing on the sort of the bigger drug scope of things. I mean, I think I think we can all acknowledge we're not going to solve this problem here or even really ever in this room. But I think what you all are doing is exactly what needs to happen, which is being vocal, bringing these things up, not just to us, but you know, asking, pooling the resources. I think if we're if we're existing. Um, if we're existing with this problem here in Bethel, it's not unique to Bethel. It's happening all over Vermont. And all of what Chris outlined, like I've heard this same thing. I believe that it is our reality right now. And I also believe that in Vermont of anywhere, we have the ability as citizens to make change happen. And the way that we make that happen is by showing up, doing exactly what you're doing tonight. And so I think that the solutions aren't here in this room. And frankly, unfortunately, they're not even really in our state yet, but the way they're gonna get here and the way that we're gonna create them is by doing this, these conversations constantly, and it's gonna feel exhausting. And it's gonna feel like you're hitting your head against a wall most of the time and not getting anywhere and chasing people off your own property. But it is also like, stick with this, don't give up on this because this is how change is gonna happen. I, through this whole conversation, all I could think is, I wonder what else is already happening, what conversations are prompting creative thinking in other towns similar to Bethel that we could resource, that we could pull in. And the reality is we have a small town office. We're essentially volunteers on the board and 
Therese is maxed out and goes above and beyond beyond what she should do. And so the more we have that community pooling of resources and, hey, I, you know, looked into some things and I found this, passing that on to Therese, passing that on to the board, that gives us a leg up to say, okay, that was something creative we didn't know existed. Let's give that a try. So by all means, keep helping us, keep having these conversations, keep kind of putting those feelers out beyond just here and then bring what you learn back to here, because this is the only way we're going to solve it is if we keep working together on it, right? So, um, can I invite you to our community um, dinner Friday night at the middle school? It's about getting people involved in the community, learning about town meeting, and all that we do, uh, all that is done. It's going to be a dinner at five thirty and a discussion and and. Pre- at six um, presentation and it's a a wonderful um, invitation to everybody to come and know how to get involved yeah and the other thing too is you know we we have two legislators that live in this town um so i mean what one on Christian, you know, we we can one on Christian. <laughs> I mean, we can you try, got him in your backyard. You know, ag- again, it, like Lindley was saying, I don't want to say our hands are completely, you know, cuffed at this point, but there are some things that we can do um, for, on the towns and the things, and and but there are some things that we can't really do, and and I think some of those things that we can't or that are very hard for the town to do might be better pull if you talk to some legislators about some of the policies that they've created at the Montpelier level because that are hampering small town policing. Um, so, so, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Kevin Geiger's here and yep. so is Kyle. So, all right. Well, thank you for coming out and definitely we, we do take this seriously and um, it's, it's a very challenging topic for us to, to, um, We've been working on this for a couple of years, and it's not, yeah. not an easy topic to, to fix. Um, yeah, that's good. I mean, and if people please. are in support of it, you know, we're happy. Yeah. You know, the select board can put forward any size budget. It's just a matter of whether or not there's people there in the audience to, to support it. And also, too, seeing what else, you know, there's other needs out there as far as, you know, I've seen the food shelf has an uptick. And there's a lot going on in the community right now, a lot of people needing help and things. So. I mean, we have, um, currently we just have, um, you know, Wi-Fi. I've used cameras in, in another town, but not really in a policing thing. Just, we had a, uh, on a big green and on the green, there was a, somebody busted out the, the gazebo for some reason. So we did put cameras up like just, but just on that, because there had been an increase in people finding needles there as well as someone had just vandalized the heck out of the thing. And um, so we did put a camera there, but they also had a police department. So they kind of monitored it. Yeah. But it's who's going to monitor it. That's the key. There's kind of cart versus cart before the horse. Yeah. I work at the Vermont Veteran Cemetery in Randolph Center. Oh, nice. Yeah. And we have in the past had a lot of issues with people coming in and doing various things that they should not be yeah one of the options that we looked at was to get a rain camera yeah now every single one of the shops in this town have access to the free internet right why not offer the people who own these shops some kind of a rebate or something if they get a ring camera they'll be able to catch anything that goes down that strip the other thing is just to get game cameras or satellite yeah. cameras. It's much cheaper used, than a security camera. We have used game cameras in places where we have, you know, vandalism, where people have um, dumping trash, you know, that sort of thing. And, and um, but it, it's something to look at. But again, you know, for me personally, I can say, that's great. We could have all the cameras in the world, but if I don't, who's going to look at them? Well, you know, if, I, you, if you offer to. them, yeah, nobody would have to look at it. Oh, the rain cam. The I get what you're, you're, right. you're putting the responsibility of viewing it on a shop owner. Yeah. Well, there is so, a process we're going through currently about the downtown. So that's something that I'll definitely make a note of and keep in mind because we have been talking about, uh, we had a big Bethel for all grant and there was some stuff in there. So but I'll make a note about ring cameras because we did talk a little bit about um, what we 
some aspects of what you could do for business owners about making businesses more accessible and things like that. And, and that might be an issue too. So that if somebody had an incident on main street or needed medical assistance or something, there might be something on the camera that could help somebody too. So, okay. Is somebody who's in danger? All yeah. I gotta do is go up and hit that button and the shop owner gets a text message immediately. Oh, that's nice. That's a good thing to know because if I someone was having an event, a health event on Main Street, we certainly want to help as many people as yeah, we can. The shop owner can call 911 or if something happens on Main Street and there's an allegation, they go, oh, hey, look, there's a the camera. They can go to that business owner and then yeah. that police department, state police can access. And okay. that takes the whole responsibility yeah. off right? of the town and puts it on to the business on. owner if they're interested in doing that. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, there like was I a said, shop owner that had a camera during the water project. So if I wanted to drive down Main Street and it oh, was all torn that's up, right. and then we've asked that shop owner a couple of times because people that park in front of, of the um, laundromat oftentimes get their whole driver's side side swipe. Um, because it's so narrow in there and just people just keep going, you know, and, but they called that shop owner and they no longer have that camera up. They just did it during for convenience for residents at the time, but they don't have it up anymore, but that would. That shop willing to do that very easily. I well, don't the time, the town actually sponsored that we we received a USDA right. grant of about seventy five hundred dollars to do advertisement for business and we put up um and we had a couple of uh, we had one here so people could see if traffic was backed up and um it was actually quite funny people were actually watching his camera on, a lady from Florida called to pay money to keep it going for a year because she found it so entertaining <laughs> so, <laughs> so, like, fun the whole thing like yeah. <laughs> so but I will write it down. I think it's a good idea. And we'll talk about, um, but like I said, there's some development issue with a grant going on Main Street. I'm certainly happy to tuck that into it to see if there's um, the ability to to do that. So this is a good idea. Thank you. Uh, suggest promoting your concern more broadly. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways is to literally run for office on the select board. And then, you know, do the campaigning that is necessary to let people know who you are and what your concern is. The other thing is you can write letters to the editor. You can uh, do those, write, put postings on front page forum. Those are kinds of things that you can do to make, to uh, bring the rest of the community up to speed on what you're experiencing because they may not be experiencing it in their neighborhood or you may find out oh my goodness somebody else just wrote in and they're they're experiencing it in their neighborhood so it would be uh the more publicity there is the better uh for everybody yeah thank you so much for coming yep Thank you. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, we yeah, see you later. This guy's having a lot of trouble right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Make a call. So the, 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 I assume that's going to go forward. Well, that's why I wondered. Was, you what you want to do? Do you want me to call right now? I mean, not. Oh, no, I don't mind. But it's going to be all just. Okay, so you want me to call there? Just ask me to take something. No, when you guys are bicycles. Haven't gone back. I mean, do you want to be here now? No, I feel sick. Yeah. So are you sure? Mm -hmm. But it's I'm not. Fine. But you know, I'm fine. But, uh, but no, no, I don't have to. Did fight. we have anybody else with public you know, comment I, while while we had that going? Comment because they didn't comment last time. But uh, yeah. just make sure you state state your name. Yeah, just want to introduce myself. Um, my name is Josh Wardell. I live up on uh, Campbell Road, and uh, I actually joined the Zoom um, a couple weeks ago, and. Uh, uh, so the main reason I jo really joined was to uh, kind of sit and listen, see how things work here. Um, but I applied to um, join the energy committee. So today I'm on the <laughs> on the agenda. So I said, oh, maybe I better show up to show my face. Um, 
but my wife's actually on the agenda as well uh, for the planning committee. Um, and what it comes down to is uh, we've been here for two years, although I've worked in Boston, I just moved up here or we've lived here, but I've been working in Boston. I just got a job up here um, and we wanted to get more involved now, especially that I'm here more full time. Um, and so uh, my way to involve, get involved is with the energy committee. That's more my background but also to start kind of attending the meetings or at least listening in, see how things go. Um, it's actually great to hear things like this. Um, and if anything, there are concerns have more been with, with uh, road maintenance, uh, you know, plowing trouble, you know, how bad the road conditions have been. That was before the flooding. Um, and then after the flooding, it seemed like nothing happened forever. Um, so there wasn't really much communication. And so I had no comment last time because I really was, wanted to know what was going on and then you guys discussed everything and i listened live as we heard that camp Brook road was going to get closed for four weeks and you heard i was on mute but you couldn't hear us screaming in the background <laughs> um and so uh, here we are now with with the road closed and and it's it's really not done right um the you know the, there's no detour signage uh the the vms signs are now dead and off already um, there's no marks on Google Maps or Waze or anything like that to detour people. So what we end up having is a ton of traffic um, coming up and down our little dirt roads that, uh, you know, you don't really have space to pass. They didn't really fix them in back to original widths after the flooding. So it's a compounding of issues. But I wish that I wish the repairs were done in, <laughs> you know, two months ago when it was warmer. At this point, it's too late to do anything about it. Um, so we're hoping that they get done quickly. Um, what road do you live on? I'm on Campbell Road, which is off the towards the top of Camp Brook Road. They get hit pretty hard in 2019. Okay. I believe I know where. I've heard lived. stories. Yes. Yes, and yeah. Patrick had a lot of the road in his yard. That's my yard. So yes. like, I have yeah. Patrick's old house. Yeah. Um, yeah. You guys want to take some of that stuff back? <laughs> um, yeah, we've actually had to move some of that back because that uh, that's not quite right. How that. You, in fact, you had a comment last time about uh, charging property owners for the drainage going in, coming from their yards. And I was in the background saying, what about the town <laughs> draining into our yards, right. <laughs> which is that problem? Sure. So it goes both ways. But um, it does. The, the the Anyway, the reason I'm really here is to kind of introduce myself in person. I signed in last time because I had submitted that letter before the last meeting. Um, so. I figured out, all right, if I'm on the agenda, I better be here. My wife has a uh, another meeting tonight, so she couldn't be here, but um, she would like to join the planning committee. So hopefully you'll get to know us and hear from us more. Thank, uh, nice. thank you for volunteering. Yes, absolutely. And, and yeah, because it's, it's in my opinion, it's better to try to fix things than to sit there complaining. Okay. All my other neighbors are also complaining about the roads, but it's like, oh, who's going down and trying to do something about it, so. Here I am. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank anyway, you. nice, nice to meet you all, and it was very informative to even to sign in. Uh, actually, just to say props to the audio and video quality were impressive. They uh, do a good job. <laughs> so, so maybe I'll sign in some more. I won't be here, uh, you know, sit here for a while. But, uh, Thank you. All right. So Kevin is here, Geiger from Two Rivers, and um, made it. Did you come from Granville? Well, we were just. Oh, I didn't have to come. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have any other public comment? I don't see anybody really online. Just Kyle's online, but he's waiting for Rec. Yep, he's waiting for so, Ellie. I, at some point, I would like to share what, what's happening with window dressing. But you want to do that in any other business? Sure. Right. Perfect. Do you mind if I just make a comment before we move on from the uh, the issue these folks were here for, which is I wonder if doing something like a public forum and a conversation, not maybe driven by the town. Um, and I don't know what committee or what entity would be best, but it's not unique to Christian Hill. No. Um, and I've gotten this complaint about North Main Street and the house on North Main Street. I've heard it about other places that are escaping my mind. And I wonder if in the idea of sort of pooling resources and having that solidarity of like, hey, you're not alone and let's come up with some creative solutions. I think it would garner more support in the long run for anything that the town can actually help with and do and push budget towards um so i don't know i'm just putting that out there as like yeah who would be the right entity to do you think anybody at the sp would be willing to i don't know i mean you don't put on uh, a, if somebody had a um or... neighborhood watch but i'm not are you aware of anything like that kevin talking about 
policing and it's a big issue for speeding, drug drug use use. and that sort of thing. Do you know of any towns or any, you know, who would come in and do a public forum on that? Are you aware of anybody? Kevin knows everybody. I mean, mean, it's it's, it's a lot like the conversation I've been in Heartland Mm -hmm. uh, recently and I've been in uh, Grinth the other night and similar issues. I I just cut Mm -hmm. the end of this thing, but they are having similar discussions there, I would say. Um, Heartland did a kind of a policing report because they don't have any police. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to, they have both uh, the sheriff and state police under contract and trying to figure out do we need more? Do we get our own person there? Right. Um, Windsor's right next door. And mm-hmm. so they're like, well, we could, we could have Windsor right. be in our town sometimes. Um, and, and so they, they called me down to just moderate a meeting about their study and just to get public comment. Mm-hmm. So that was a thing we can do is we can just we're not in the town and we can just run meetings right that kind of stuff. Meeting. yeah um, but certainly the state police you know, we work with the state police do they have like an outreach branch of the state police that kind of does that sort of they, they have uh, public information folks um that are largely used more in incidents right but, but we can reach out to them i'm them. just curious if they do you know um i i Certainly um, in another town had neighborhoods that actually had an active neighborhood watch and um, they were lucky. It was run by a retired uh, police officer from New Jersey. Mr. He was on it. There's nothing happened in his neighborhood that well, you they know had. about it. And, um, but I don't really see much of that anymore. Neighborhood watches. And I wondered if who forms those now. It used a few to be years police. ago. I, I don't know. I say a few, but it's probably a <laughs> half a dozen at least years ago. We did have something in this town where it was, uh, it, was it was, school. yeah, it was at the school and they went yeah. to what, like yeah. four different communities in our area to talk about. It was when the drug, when the drug epidemic was yeah. really firing. I mean, it's getting worse, but they they had gone around. They did remember because uh, I attended at the school. Was it the state police yep. that did it? It was some gentleman out of the headquarters up in Williston, if I remember right. So maybe maybe you could reach out to your contact at yeah yes, here so just see here in Royalton and see if they that. have somebody that could, like you said, facilitate the yeah. conversation. I'm, I'm sure they have some community people. Right. Um, your job is to do right, yeah, kinds of things. or help help you put you in the right. Yeah, yeah, I remember doing that. By people who actually know more about what can or can't be done. I feel right. like we're we're novices in this realm. Yeah. We're not the best people to facilitate this conversation. But right. If we, can, if we can get it going, mm-hmm. it's a good idea. Yeah. Have other people. <laughs> All right, so we will move uh, forward. We have our appointment. Um, so we will go to Kevin. Um, you want to introduce this so, topic? Yeah, so Kevin Geiger is Two Rivers Lotte Creek Area Regional Planning Commission. And I I <laughs> I read this and I was like, we need an explanation from Kevin <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, I read the I read your town of the sample letter and then I read the printed out the highlighted portions that you had done in that like 30 page document. I'm like, I I'm unsure. I'm like, Kevin will tell us. So when the feds put out some money, they, they do it. No flow or no flow, we call yes. it. Um, and they're, they're verbose. Um, yeah. Yeah. Usually, <laughs> usually we just read them just go, okay, let's try to do that or that or that. The, um, the important nuggets on this are, it's called Thriving Communities. It's through the U.S. Department of Transportation. And they are basically getting in the ball game that a lot of other folks have gotten in the ball game before. And they're like, wait a minute, we, sh- you know, we should talk about flood resilience because they're talking about flood resilience. And, and we should talk about um, housing and we should, and so they've kind of glommed all these things together. So if yeah. you're reading that, you probably got the correct impression. Like this is kind of a all over the it's a mess. Christmas tree, <laughs> and like, yeah. agglomeration. I'm of like things. flood right. resilience and equitable housing. transportation. I'm like what? What? I'm yeah. like and focus. So, <laughs> yeah, no oh, good. And then you're reading it right now. Like, yeah. um, the and the goal there is to fund capacity regional capacity builders. So this is a little like what we call our MTAP funding. So our municipal 
Um, Transportation alternatives? No, MTAP is technical assistance program. Oh, oh. Um, and we can't do transportation under that. And so we have some special money for a couple of years uh, from the administration to, to work on that. But this is more like the transportation side of this. So how, um, and it would sort of fund a position with us and in our partner agency across the river um, for three years to basically do footwork around trying to find projects and shepherd projects and manage projects. It doesn't have um, much project money in it at all, but it's mostly that. It does not require any match from the town. Uh, it's more um, for towns to go, yes, we'd like some of that help. And they have this bizarre tool um, that says some of our towns are transportation disadvantaged. Bethel is one of those. Mm -hmm. on, and how the black box does that, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you're red on the map. Um, that's that's why we picked Bethel, Randolph, Rochester, Hancock couple other towns are, are in the mix there. Um, so we're seeking a letter of support because that's part of the uh, what's going to make the grant work if it works. There are only probably five of these nationwide. So it's a pretty good um, stretch that we would get it. Um, but if we did, it would definitely fund us to be able to help you more. Kind of, I would imagine, like Rita does from her office. Yep. Um, but spread across other things that are peripheral to transportation a bit more. Okay. So they want us to look at, for example, potentially how zoning uh, and transportation go together. And there are connections there, but mm. they're not. Locked. So basically, if you get it, it would be funding you to either to undertake some more studies and and um or assist us in other ways it wouldn't be a project where i need to give you manpower answering a bunch of questions or doing that sort of thing no, okay no, good more but more rita we want more rita <laughs> yes more like gina to, barber I'd she's like awesome to, like to clone everybody that we get. yeah um yeah no it's much for us 20 percent of the money so if we got the full batch that's about um sixty thousand plus 20% of that money has to flow through two towns. Okay. Um, and that would be, again, it's not to build things, and you can imagine $60,000 would build you a whole lot of stuff. No. But maybe help with some engineering to get things ready towards gold. Okay. And with that, along with that engineering, the money that flowed through would also pay someone like I'm paying Rita right now to be the municipal project manager on a project? That would already be in the... In the mix of the money right, that they have. Yeah. Well, then I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, we have Harry over here and Mark. Yeah, he's doing so great. That we you know, we can help towns replace their furnaces or whatever. Right. We have Sydney on MTAP, and so the towns that fall into that bucket are largely anything sewer and water related and somewhat recreational. Yeah. Um, and then this would be more transportation. Yeah. Okay. So, so in this case, I'm trying to say that you would. You know, if you were able to get the grant funding for this, then you would look into those towns that you had just talked about, and you would study potential projects for that town, yep. uh, or recommendations for problem areas or something that needs attention. You would do the behind the scene work, right? I imagine, like, and, we're go back in time a few years to the sidewalk project in in, in South Wales and Block. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, they've done a lot of work to get that to where it is now. We could have been in there earlier on with more technical capacity to get that. Rita's managing the project now. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it took a lot of time to get that up. There. As you know, transportation projects are yeah. long runs. Yeah. And, and then, how are, I mean, obviously, you're going to do your best to try to align. If you did a project for Bethel, you try to align that with some grant money to try to move that forward. But is there, Part of that, is there any money behind the scenes like that they're looking at investing some more money towards these projects or is this things that we'd have to go through the normal grant writing? Through so you think, state? are they making it shelf, kind of shelf ready? So well, it sounds like what he's going to do is get it shelf ready, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, do it. Then how do we get it off the shelf, I guess, was my question at that point. Is is there going to be money as tagged to this or is this something that at that point then we would have to get in touch with? There's no the agency of transportation to try and get some grant money. No, to do that. Or, well, no, you know. that's that would be on the 
the physician's task is to get yeah. everything up to like here, here's a grand award. Um, the the theory is that there is more money coming down the pipe through various the infrastructure act and other things. Um, whether that theory plays out, and you know. Given the federal government these days, who knows mm -hmm. um, whether even they're working next week. Yeah. Um, so, but theoretically, there's some more money in the pipe for certain projects out there. Yeah. Nice. Well, it's hard. Yeah. The crystal ball is just as cloudy as everybody else's. But so, if they if you're awarded the money, are you going to award it per town per capita? Is that how it goes through for if it has to flow through? Uh, well, right now only like maybe eight towns. Of our, in our region would qualify. So we'd be working just with those eight towns. Okay. Yeah. The, the money would have to, unlike other programs, um, this, it would have to be town specific. So once the money, once you're awarded the grant, then we'll be able to sit down to figure out what projects we want to work on. Yeah. All right. Makes yeah, sense. I would imagine, you know, Granville, Hancock, you, know, you guys would have more progress than they would. Yeah. But, but still, but it'd be nice, yeah, once we could sit down and figure out what our next priorities. Obviously, we've finished up Better Connections. That's left some stuff open. I was on the phone with Rita and Peter, Pete Pels the other day, kind of hammering out another grant, whether we're going to go for it or not, and what it was going to do for us. And But, um, so yeah, that'd be, that'd be good. I'm all for grant money with no match. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it, yeah, if it works, it'd be good. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. And um, it basically would fund a person for three years. Nice. Full time? Full time. Nice. Yeah. You're trying to change it if it happens. Yeah, absolutely. I did see on my letter that I sent you my draft letter says Rochester. Yeah, I saw. That's all right. I can fix it. <laughs> I'll I'll fix it. You need a I think so. If you want to make a motion to um send a letter of support. Move to allow Trees to send a letter of support for Two Rivers out of Quichi to pursue this U.S. grant opportunity. Second. Any all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Yeah. And, um, um, and I'll try to touch base with you on the on the police thing. But, um, yeah. You know, Royalton, I've seen stuff in the paper. But yeah. It's whatever is happening. It's Something happening. was going on in Corinth just recently, too. That yes. Was in the paper, Chelsea, Chelsea, the whole area. Chelsea, it's, it's Tunbridge. Tunbridge. Yeah. yeah. It is. So I don't know if it's, you know, there's, I think there's perception, and then there's obviously um, more stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know where you parked, but you can, there's, if you park right out back here, you can go back out this handicapped accessible ramp, or you can go out the front door. That's where you came in, but thank you for coming. Yeah, Appreciate thank you. It. Yeah, I'll time. get this to you tomorrow, Kevin, because I'm going on vacation for a week on Wednesday, so I'll get this to you tomorrow. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we had Ellie. Yeah, um, I'll let, I'll speak to, um, uh, our request. Uh, Kyle, you're on. Hi, everybody. Um, we just wanted to check in with the select board and see about having um, a small sort of ceremony to uh, kick off the skate park being complete and um, just uh, get people out for what's hopefully a warmish November day of skateboarding. Um, and then um, probably try to follow that up in the in the um late spring, early summer with uh, maybe a, a larger scale thing. But just wanted to kind of acknowledge all the uh, hard work that went into it and um, celebrate that a little bit. So, yeah, that's uh, what we're asking permission to do on Saturday. This this Saturday? This Saturday, um, the 18th from 2 to 4. And just have something positive that's going on in the community. Well, I think... I think the challenge that we have right now with the skate park is it's not finished. So, and, you know, we have connectivity issues from the recreational side of it to the skate park that wasn't done, changed or whatever through the, through the um, construction sequence that happened. Mm -hmm. I think, we all, I think we all would like to have a ceremony. I guess I'm just 
you know, are we rushing this uh, in November? Because November is probably not <laughs> always the, uh, the the greatest opportunity with things. Um, but if you go over there right now, we still have the sidewalk that's not connected to to the skate park that was supposed to be connected to the skate park that's not, that now we have to, and, and there's some other remedial work that hasn't been done there. There's so. a pile of stone there and there's still the fencing up. I mean, to me, it's an active work site and I think it's a liability for the town I mean, until I'll, it's finished. Okay. I mean, unless, I, mean I, guess, I guess what I'd throw at you, Kyle, is if you were saying, hey, we've, we've followed up with whatever. It sounds like two contractors at this point to get that stuff tied in. Yeah. So if, if you said, hey, we followed this up and I'll make it up, you know, the, the week of the 21st, all the work's going to be completed. We'd like to do something on the... <laughs> 27th you know right. just throwing dates out there but yeah you know with the work being done I, I i can't say why anybody would say not to but i think the caution that i would have is that it's not finished and we would open ourselves up to some liabilities there if you know either accessibility pieces or you know we the sidewalk's not connected to some of the drainage there's a stuff hole isn't done. there's still <laughs> the there. yeah there, there's a lot of obstacles there still um, to and we're hoping finish. to have it done in the next couple of weeks. So yeah. um, once REM comes in and finishes, and then they'll, then they're still gonna. I, I'm assuming they're gonna seed and and uh, mulch. If it's too late for that, we'll seed and mulch in the spring. But at least there won't be a hole, you know, where that's been dug and a pile of aggregate right. and everything. It's just right now, it's. So I know somebody it all gets kinda... tangled up in it or trips and you know, twists their ankle or something. It's. Yeah, I no, I think I think those are all um, valid points um, when you bring them up in in that sense. I mean, my eagerness to celebrate um, maybe, uh, yeah, I, I look beyond that. But that all that all makes sense, especially like the liability thing with this sort of uneven ground around there and and all of that stuff going on. Um, so maybe yeah maybe it is better to hold to hold off and um try to get something with a little more momentum you know after the winter as things um sort of come around again or if we get thrown some ridiculous warm weather after things are wrapped up then maybe yeah. just something on, on the fly you know this season but i think all your points about safety and and not being quite all that welcoming as of right now are are well taken um one one question i have is <clears throat> do we want to leave that fence you, you know i'm i'm i think we basically hit the point where the concrete's cured like you know we can people can skate it do we leave the fencing up for the time being because of the stuff going on around it or is it okay to just sort of like open up a section so people can do it you know as they so choose i'd leave the fence up until it's done done because it's still an active construction site until it's finished i noticed i was over there saturday at noon <laughs> taking pictures of the vandalism and um so Terrible. i think there's yeah which is terrible and the sign is over has fallen over that's over there about i think it talked about you know what was going on maybe um but yeah i would say leave the fence up make sure and when i was there a fence was still up and i had to walk over it which was good and um i think leave it up until it's done just you know what at least it shows it's letting people know it's not open yet if they choose to go past it and somebody gets hurt i'm gonna stand a better chance with the insurance company than i'm gonna if it's down so at this point therese who would be because it, it you know we have the we have a couple different identities we have the the um construction associated with the skate park itself yep and then we have the connectivity pieces to the skate park yep so and and then and there's kind of two separate people overseeing those yeah so who would make the determination like hey everything's all good to go and let's take down the snow fence today and do something and 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 advertise it to be open tomorrow. I so think who would be that person to I make? think at this point, well, they're going to advertise to be open. I'm not sure. But Chris Fors will oversee the last of it because we're using VOREC money. I have 38, I think 3808. And um, 
land water conservation money to use to put towards it. Volrec will pay for the rest to finish that sidewalk. Okay. And so Chris um, is the one who got the estimate and is going to oversee the work for REM. And once the work is done, Chris will let me know. And then I can email Ellie and Kyle and they can, you know, blast it out there to let people know it's open. So, I mean, would it be safe to say like, like in some ways, like Kyle and Chris to kind of work together, and when they the have before, done, they, they could they get a, yeah, you guys they you, could talk together and say they we do feel now. that this is all yeah. the construction's done. And it's, yeah, you and we're good you and it up. You and Chris text right or con yeah, or we, contact. yeah we, we yeah yeah we yeah, keep in touch. He, yep. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to oversee it. So once it's done, um, you know, you can reach out to him and just have him keep you in the loop so that once REM comes and finishes up, he can tell you when it's done. And I don't know whose snow fence it is, if it's ours or if it was Michael Parker's or whose it is. Um, but between you and Chris, I'm sure you can figure that out. Sure. That sounds but yeah, good. Just, yeah, just let him know. He's, we're hoping he's in and out in the next couple of weeks and it'll be done and ready to go. Cool. So once it's open, you can choose the best date that fits you to have the celebration. You got our great. support. Thank you. I mean, I, I, I definitely would be looking for like a spring celebration, you know, <laughs> um, but at the same time, if you wanted to say, hey, you know, next week at this date, we're going to officially open the park, <laughs> yeah. you know, because yeah. we want to use our toy before it goes away for the wintertime. Then, <laughs> I mean, I jump right on that. Yeah. But but we just have to make sure that both you, Kyle and Chris have agreed that all the construction's good, it's safe and Mm -hmm. And we can and we can go on it, and I think that'd be exciting. Hopefully, the weather holds out a little bit longer, so that maybe you have the chance to enjoy it for a weekend or yeah. a week or something. Hey, Kyle, what's your opinion on the on the um, vandalism? Uh, Michael Parker emailed us back and said that there's such a material called elephant snot that he thinks might work to get the paint off. Uh, Dave Aldrighetti uh, messaged me today and said that Cal Poland has a dustless sandblaster i mean do you think it's better to just leave it and just we'll wear it off over <clears throat> time because of course we had just had the dang thing sealed ah, that's a, <laughs> old that's, and new so what's your thought about that yeah that's a um dave's suggestion of, of talking with cal that seems like a, a decent uh idea i don't i have no idea what the elephant's not stuff is um <laughs> Me, you know just the name alone <laughs> Interesting. I'm, I'm happy yeah. to to put some elbow grease into it if that you know if we determine that that's a a good thing to try in other in other spots i've seen stuff like that get painted over with a you know gray paint that's similar to the skate yeah. park color i don't know how i'd have to ask michael how that affects sort of sealing and resealing and all that um, That's what but, I was going to ask, because we just paid to have the new park sealed and then the old section we also had sealed at the same time. But right. if we could paint over it without it affecting the ceiling, then maybe that's an option. Or or if he says to just leave it and let it get worn off, maybe so that it, I'm just afraid I don't want to have to pay to reseal the thing again. <clears throat> yeah, but right. I can reach out to Michael yeah. and ask him what his you know, maybe we just leave it and it wears off with skateboards and bikes and I'm mean, sandblasted enough to know dustless or not, it's going to take the seal right out of the Right, seat. yes, I should have said we have a sandblasting expert over here, that's right, I should have thought of you. <laughs> that's right, 33 years she had in the business. And I, I also uh, visited the site there and I, you know, I could be naive with some of the tags that were done over there but it didn't appear to me that anything that was done there was offensive or Vulgar. In, a, in a in a manner that we would have to like cover it immediately type deal is that kind of your conclusion as well kyle uh yeah that i would agree with that um it's just so ugly mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. um but I yeah there's Right, and again, I don't know everything, but nothing appeared vulgar to, in my in my eyes either. So, I did hear from um, our state, you know, the transportation local. I don't know his title is from VTrans, but Ryan Slack, he checks the roads. You know, he works for the state. He does uh, 
Rochester and Bethel Royalton and for the state. He said he saw a vehicle out there. He was out checking roads at 3 a.m. when we had that storm. And he said, I saw headlights. And I said, did you swing in and get a plate number? He's like, no, I was doing my job. I was out doing something. And uh, he was checking roads and the interstate and obviously higher priorities. But he said, I did see lights over there and thought it was kind of suspicious. He said if someone was out skate park and, you know, skateboarding at 3 a.m. But we did report it to the constable. And um, I was going to call around to a couple of local um, hardware stores to see if somebody bought a bunch of purple paint recently. And just if that would help. I was actually pretty. I was actually pretty surprised that the paint held on the surface as well as it did. I, yeah. when I talked to you, I figured, uh, it's you know, it's cold, it's wet, it's you know that mm-hmm. time of year that it probably, but it held like really well. Yeah. So I don't know what to use for paint, <laughs> but that was probably the right paint to use. But <laughs> it was it was on there pretty good. And it, we put the fresh wash right yeah. it to make sure, and it went nowhere. Wow. So yeah. yeah. So I, if you want to talk to Michael Parker, I'm going to be away for a week. But if you want to talk to Michael and get his opinion, I, you know, maybe he says leave it. Maybe he says paint over it. But I'm not certainly in favor of messing up the brand new sealant either. So if you don't no. mind getting his opinion, that would be great. Yeah, I'll give him a shout this week and just, um, yeah, see what he has to say. Thanks. Sure. Yeah, he's, he's certainly the expert, so he'd know. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely, if you if you are able to get everything done at the park, um, feel free to let us know. So you know, we'd be more, or somebody from the board, would be more willing to go out there. Mm-hmm. You know, when you open it on some weekend day or or whatever that is. So just Great. keep in touch with us. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Sure. Thanks, Ellie. Thank you. Great. So we have a couple of appointments here uh, to planning and energy committee. Did you um, did you want to do the planning one? Means you're sure. I actually was not at that meeting, but the planning commission she did attend a meeting, and the planning commission already approved her. That's the way it works. It's different for the planning commission, but they approve her, and then. Um, to join and then you guys kind of bless that appointment okay all right and again it's good to see people wanting to get involved yes it was yeah. a it was a banner week we had you know you had samantha and josh I was like this is it's yeah. rare we get two people at once i mean it's good to have people yeah proactively wanting to be a part because usually as we see like nothing against it, but we're mostly reactionary people where we're always like, Oh my God, we got to get involved because this is going on. And it's nice to be out in front and keep our committees strong. Yeah. Um, and we have been lacking on both of those. So it's good to we have. see some new faces. So just need a motion. Uh, and Samantha would be a three-year appointment too. Okay. Can I make the motion <clears throat> to, uh, <clears throat> Appoint Samantha Godden, if that's how you pronounce her last name, uh, to the Planning Commission for a three-year term. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Go back and out now. <laughs> I, I don't know about this next guy. <laughs> I have real concerns. <laughs> he shows up. He's not on screen. He shows up. He's in person. <laughs> He's in person tonight. So, uh, Energy Committee, I don't know, Gene, or... No, I was not at the last meeting. So. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. But I was there. <laughs> <laughs> at least you were. That's good. It didn't scare him off. <laughs> so. so I didn't. I didn't scare him off. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well done, not there. being there. Well done, not <laughs> being there. Right. <laughs> right. So I just need a motion for Josh. I move to approve Josh Wardell to the Energy Committee. Okay. Second. Hey, all in favor. Right. So ten ten year terms. Always yeah, ten, ten yeah. years. That's what you're willing to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, actually, <laughs> get it off uh, unlimited. Move it's like the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you again. Yes. Thank you. It's great. Uh, pool fee updates. So this is what D Tree had given you, and she did the nice little spreadsheet here for you. Um, I wrote a couple notes on here just so you'd know what the current pricing was, and then she gave you some Randolph rates, mm-hmm. Rutland rates, and and um, are those the closest pools? I was just wondering. I mean, it must be Randolph, Rutland. There's no other people um, that have like Northfield used to have a pool. Do they yeah, still that's have a right. pool? Right, Woodstock. 
Woodstock, Woodstock has one. Does Northfield still have a pool? I don't know. And, and, uh, Lebanon. Lebanon has. Yeah. Yeah. Do we know what? I, was just I have no idea. Thinking of like rates and stuff, and I didn't. No, like, she there's only be more of them around. She here. looked at obviously at Randolph being the closest. We actually pick up a lot of Randolph people generally, mm-hmm. especially around time about taking lessons. We have a lot of people that come to Bethel Pool to take lessons, um, yeah, even though Randolph offers them. It's, it's kind of it's not a pool, but it's a, a swimming it's alley. A hole in the ground. With they water. have a pond. <laughs> the Tumbridge Pond. They get their own pond. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yep. Well, if we don't fix the pool liner, we could. Have it's done. Own hole in the ground. That's it's all done. Oh, it's all done. Never mind. Yeah, take it back. all done. It, it is done. Um, so chief, he came back and finished. So yeah, he's yeah. Thank goodness it, the rain stopped. So <laughs> I know. Yeah, we were waiting on that and then putting the ladders in, and uh, it's been a thing. So you can see she gave you the 2018, 2019, and what she's suggesting for 2024 um so I'll, I, don't, I think it's reason. the only thing i saw on that was you know randolph rates for like the swim lessons is considerably higher than and remember that i don't know how theirs work but our swim lessons are on top of a season pass purchase okay so you have yeah, to add my the, question i yeah. don't know if that came with like did you have to be a past member in right. Randolph or not, or yeah, how that came with? I, my guess is that's why their rates are that. Okay, is not, that's not to me. That's not a lot of money. It's not. No, um, it's not, and it's access to really good. You know, Dietrich is very diligent. She she ran an open swim at the at a lake where she was a director there. So she's been done a really great job for your program. Greg hired her and really you know was being run by teenagers and now it's yeah. you know really stepped up my, my, my comment is for me it's mm-hmm. not a lot of money right but if there are people in the community for whom it is a lot of money yep uh do we have any any scholarship, way of scholarship or, or i don't know i'd have to i'm not i'm not aware of any um and could that be something maybe offered? This may be not the best partnership, but mm-hmm. um, like the food shelf would know what families are in need. And if they had something that said, hey, interested in a pool membership, but need help with the funding, come talk to us. And then they get, you know, they help funnel it to whomever. And they help pay for the is. fee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean, you know, the pool is obviously not a money maker. It's never going to be a money maker no, for you. I, 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 just gonna know. I yeah. just don't want it. somebody. <laughs> I'm not I don't sure. Want a kid not to be able to. Of course, <laughs> and going to know what families in the yeah. community. Yeah, and I think that, that most. And without Deidre here, she may have already run into that, and I'm yeah. not aware. But I could yeah, certainly I find think out. She's the for people. For people. Okay. She's, so there's something already happening. Um, and I, I could ask. I, yeah. yeah, I would. I, don't I would ask. Her. I'll have and, to. And ask I do her. work with some of the um, local groups, very, like One Planet. Yeah. And those ones. Yeah. She's really on top of knowing families and knowing. Very good, yeah. And, and, but you know, school. I don't know. Yeah, there are there are others anyway. Yeah, I can. Ask. Just as just a, I, I would like to make it possible if we. Yeah, right. Need I to. can ask Dietrich. Um, I can ask her because I don't know. So I just wrote Dietrich scholarship. Well, I don't know if you heard Chris's comment. So they already do partner with One Planet through the school. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And so I wonder if expanding it beyond. And there's usually that. a couple of camps mm-hmm. that happen in the summertime too. Right. Like, yep. Yep. And it's yeah. not necessarily they're paying the full amount. It might be a portion of it. I just, mm-hmm. I, just I know like you see those advertisements that come for, for my children and it'll be like, you know, making up the camp is fifty dollars for the week and you know they go swimming too which mm-hmm. yeah that's way usually they go that's swimming cool. like each day or every other yeah. day or something yeah um, so but that's like an all-day thing yeah i'm just yeah you know. we'll find out i don't know james but i can ask the only thing i was starting to think about is you know we <clears throat> we've been talking about you know uh, a year-round facility right and um Again, I don't know how we would do it, but you know, we are we are adding pieces to that facility to try and shape it a year round mm-hmm. facility. Sure. The skate park, we have the pool, we have the ice skating that goes on in the wintertime. And, you know, I, I just wonder at what point do we expand upon 
these things i mean they cost money obviously to do so you know do you have a make it up once a year do you have a skate pass or or once a year do you have a you know center pass you know, or do, <laughs> or can you say hey this includes swimming skating and or both sorry there's two skatings yeah. <laughs> winter skating and summer skating yeah but like a, I know it's I like know. the policing end of it is really difficult because we're not going to have somebody there like checking passes. All just the time. like you do, but because that's you have the gate to the. But pool, it'd be more so it's easier. to But sometimes when you passes. have like that, where individuals, let's say, you know, if I have a pass and I'm over there skating, and there are people that don't have, you kind of tend to take a little more ownership into like this is my place, mm-hmm. and, you know. Yeah. I take care of it and watch out for others and. Not biking. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I know you can't really police it but at yeah. some point it, we have to kind of maybe think about that because you know i'm sure that we're going to want to do more things at the skate park or this install we, that this we have snowshoes mm-hmm. yeah. we have snowshoes right. um, that's right for, for the kids to mm. snowshoe so we have that availability because we did talk about the school during better connections mm-hmm. i don't think it came out in volrec mm-hmm. but we had talked about not sure that part made it through maybe you remember ellie but about the sharing the equipment we're talking about doing an right. equipment share at the school where people could right. go and check out skis and right. and different and right. snowshoes and, but I don't, that and, didn't make it through did it right and and um and also i know that last year they did get ice skates <laughs> that's right, right. Mm-hmm. they did have the money and they got ice skates for the kids the thing is that we're 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 wondering about what the weather is going to be for the ice rink this year sure and um we're having a major discussion on do we skip it this year or is there a chance that we can get that ice it'll be cold is it going to be cold oh good i had ice on guaranteed it Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't call it doesn't get cold enough. Okay. Hey, there was ice in my right. my my water left in my vehicle this morning. Right. So it's coming. Because because you know. um yeah, because maybe we're not having mm-hmm. a skateboard celebration because the cold weather's gonna come and we're gonna get the ice rink up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this might be yes. overcomplicating this, but just something to think about, maybe just put out to Dietrich to see how she feels about it. But like you could do instead of having one singular price, you know, do a sort of like tiered, tiered pricing. And so there's your, your lowest cost, but then there's, you know, the, this is what it costs us. And then there's the sort of what are, you know, sustaining members of, if you're able to, you pay a little extra knowing that you're helping somebody who can't pay that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Range. So you have those tiers of so if someone, no. this is the what it costs, period. If you want to pay extra, you could donate yeah, towards a scholarship program. <laughs> yeah. I don't uh-huh. see it working because it didn't work. We tried to do that in the hot lunch program. Too many proud people didn't want to say they couldn't afford it. But they're not doing that's it. The, that's the only way you're going to it. To... Someone's got to come forward and say, I can't afford it. Sure. And you're, I don't believe you're going to get very many people who are willing to be willing to do that. Now, people get home first. Hmm. yeah so well i can ask her um that's, you know that's my experience yeah okay. i think that she's just trying to wrap it up because Dietrich yeah. is not going to be your pool director anymore mm-hmm. so i think that she's trying to just get yeah. this in place no, for somebody good. else are you all right Sam? i'm okay i'm just <laughs> there you when, go thank when, you when did these kids come in, in they start july you know they'd start when the pool opened yeah 2024 yeah oh 24. they'd start you know when the, the pool opened the only the only other thing I was going to add to this is um, now that the school system is the way it is, so we have members from other towns that come to our school here, just like our people go to you know, their towns, sure. is if you get the scenario of I'll make it up, but if you have a middle schooler that's over here and they're going to go to the pool for the day, well, they're technically a non-resident. You know, so, you know, would there, you know, maybe they fall under here because if you know, they're in that one planet, if that's why they're just here, be a group rate. if they're, if they're in one planet, then they saying, get like, this rate, no matter where they're from. Like kids that have aged out of one planet, like middle schoolers right. are kind of a perfect example. Their school is here. They're maybe over here hanging out with their friends, but now they're considered a non-resident 
for going that's like for the summertime if they want to go for the summer yeah but if it's a if it just may be something to think if, about if, that if they're with their friend for the day they both pay five bucks if they want a or um, if yeah. they want a day pass no matter whether you're resident or non-resident it's five bucks and the pass i think people can bring a guest with their pass so if yeah. if you know johnny's visiting Susie and they go to the pool you know we're not singling them out well it's just right. something to think about because we're not just yeah. residents we're also you know exactly. school residents of you know the towns now and but I'll ask her about scholarships for family, possible tiered pricing. If people want to pay, this is the price. Do you want to donate to the scholarship program? Yeah, right. Benefactor and just pay all the bills in the library for free. There you go. I like it. Ask Chris. He seems to know these people. Well, and Therese, maybe you simplify it. There is a, a lower tier. There's the, this is what it costs us. And if you're willing to pay a little more, it helps subsidize exactly. other things and keep these costs down for all Bethel families, right? right? Mm -hmm. You know, you could, you could do it in a way that doesn't single people out or make them feel exactly. less. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You were, I was gathering you, that you were thinking more of the higher end and not the lower end right. of people saying, I can't afford it. Your mm -hmm. version was, mm -hmm. if you can Right. Yeah, a little more, bit more. more and more places are starting to integrate programs like this and i'm sort of fascinated by it and i'm tracking it at the school that i teach at right now is they now have a three-tiered payment system and yeah. they are still making their money on their classes even though they'll have a handful of students who will pay the lowest tier so it's all it's doing is making it accessible for people who used to look at the price tag and say oh i can't afford that i got to take a week off of work and pay 1100 bucks for a class i can't mm -hmm. i can't do that but now they can actually make that happen and the school is finding that it's leveling out there are enough people paying the higher one that it subsidizes the lower nice. one and so i'm just i'm seeing this happening in a number of different places and just curious if it's something to explore and, and we just um, with the window mm -hmm. dresses is another example it's a charge a minimal fee but nobody is turned away mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. yeah it's accessible for all yeah. So while we have you on the spot, yeah, <laughs> I was just trying to get out. <laughs> so she can sweat it now. So yeah, yeah. So now that we've gotten phase two of the skateboard part, yeah, completed or right. just about completed. Right. What what are we looking like is going to be the next phase of that plan? Plan um, that we're right. going to over that yeah, space. We haven't, we haven't <clears throat> decided yet. Um, and we were just um. Because with um, we don't have anything for the right. rest of the year on on the agenda, um, um, and um, and we're just waiting to see about the pool and, and the people pool to director. survey. I'd be curious since the original survey was when did you do that? 2012. 2012. Yeah. That could be interesting at at your booth at town meeting. You know, you always do a nice booth. I'm curious what. What do people want now? You know, I, I really, I just, I have no idea anymore. We see other towns doing so many different things. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, what people would want to see next. And the pool, yes, we, they, select board made the fix, which was nice. Right. Um, and I and we're just waiting to see what happens with the pool director in the summer. Right. Yeah. And, um, and you know, are you, you guys are advertising moved. yet? We have advertised. Yep. And we'll be re putting it out again, but it was advertised. There was a poster up at the pool all, all summer. And then, yeah, and there is one up. Do you advertise? We that? would advertise in the newspaper. Um, okay. and you know, from porch forum, I think it was out there. We put it on the website. Okay. So we end up, so, but, um, would you we'll put anything in it. Vermont League? cities and towns they've got we can they have a classifieds yeah. for free and um yeah. but we'll hit it harder now that's okay. once the season wraps up but thank goodness we're able to do the fiberglassing and which it wasn't like a whole yeah, rebuild just, yeah. i know the next thing we have to do over there is we have to build a little addition because the plumber is saying we have to get the chlorine tank okay, yeah. out of the Right. Oh, then he wants us to do that like ASAP. And I'm like, well, right. So, <laughs> okay. So that's what. Yeah. So, so that's. The rest of the year, we we're waiting on what's happening with the pool. Yeah. And I do know that Farron Griffin is asked to be at our next um, recreation committee. Oh, for the conservation? Oh, good. No, I think it's for something else. Oh, cool. He's always. Well, I mean, and that's where I was kind of getting at is, you yeah. know, we're coming up to town well, meeting day. Yeah, so yeah, so maybe, you know, so circling so the wagons and trying to figure out where we're at or where right. people want to see right. us go. Yeah. But also we're 
close to budget season. So how much right. do we need to put in the recreational fund to move forward and keep projects coming and, yeah. you know, be right. thinking of it. When, I don't, it's so hard. You'll to have another meeting or two December before. December 6th is our next meeting. January. So you'll have like one or two more meetings before we have to right. put our budget in. So, yeah. Right. It's so hard to know now, isn't yeah. it? What, I mean, so. And it looks nice over there since you guys had the equipment moved and now you've done the second phase and you're going to have the, right. you know, the accessible parking lot and you have the nice gazebo that Chuck donated. That's Yeah, really but nice. that's only there temporarily. Oh, where's it going? Um, I don't know because we agreed that if you put it there, that it would be a temporary thing and that we would, um, um, he was willing to move it when, when because when we got the permit, we we have the permits that we have from the DRB says that we put a basketball court where that gazebo is. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. I know that. It's nice now. I know. I think kids put their skates on and stuff in yeah, there. So it's yeah. been. Yeah, I've so, actually saw quite a few people there this summer, maybe yeah. working remotely or right. doing stuff. And there. it's worked well for our Halloween events. Oh, sure. Too, yeah. The gazebo. So maybe he so could relocate it. We have, to, we have to, you know, um, figure out a lot of different things. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, because what we did last year, we had some trees removed. So because they were, if they came down, they were going to take out the pool fence. So we yeah. did have some maintenance like yeah. that done. And but um, huh? yeah, so we well, good to know. So yeah, we have a a lot of discussing and researching and things. Yeah, to do. so many things that so you, you know. So many things. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And so the trails will be open, so that'll be nice. Right. And because see yeah, we're we'll on. The trail situation being finished, the yeah. Borek, that that exactly. Borek thing is being done next summer. Yep. And so between the trails and the pool, you it's know, <laughs> at, we we figured, well, we get a breather from all, exactly. the, all the work and the fundraising That's that we true. want to celebrate. Just have us some celebration. Yeah. You guys before yeah. we get to working. Again. Maybe all you could maybe I should only do this or just like do a really fun family fun Friday and call. You know what I mean? Right. You guys have been right. fundraising right. since ever. You and must so be we, need, we need a break. You do. You deserve a break. Yeah. It's a lot. You guys have done a, a tremendous amount. Yeah. A tremendous yeah. amount. That wouldn't have happened without you guys. So. Yeah. So so yeah, so that's that's where we are. Mm. Anything further on the pool fees or if not, I just need a motion to approve the B rates for 2024. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. And I'll see you guys at the community dinner. Friday. 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 What are you, what are you right. serving? Um, the land and <laughs> Why wait until Friday, right? <laughs> For as long as it lasts, right? Yeah. This is all you can eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ellie. Drive safe. <laughs> all right. And we have outdoor cultivator tier one small cultivator cannabis license renewal. It's, it's a lot. So obviously this person received a license last year directly from the state of Vermont. But since you formed the Cannabis Control Board, mm -hmm. these permits come to you. You can see or they you can see them anyways. So, well, yeah, you get to see what you see. They asked, uh, you know, do they comply with required inspections? They said yes. Mm -hmm. Is their proposed cannabis establishment project in a public building? They said no. Is the physical site of operation on a municipal water supply? They said no. Are you a home occupancy business? And they said yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I had talked to um, Rick Benson and after I looked o looked over the application and then I actually reached out to the state of Vermont because their original um, CCB guidance, they actually quoted um, a statute that was that had been repealed. So I did write to them and said, OK, wait a second. What is it? We don't want to put anyone in jeopardy. So what is it we're supposed to release and what we're not supposed to release? So I heard back from them and um, basically. Okay. It, <clears throat> right. Well, you know, the thing is, it says it tells you here that you can't replace the location. But if you also release the LLC, they can look at it on the Secretary of State's website. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to put anybody in jeopardy, especially when the the current law specifically states that outdoor cultivation is subject to required agricultural practices. So it's nothing 
zoning affects it. The only thing I did ask, because it ended up being the state, one of the attorneys for the Cannabis Control Board that wrote me back, I did ask him um, how this affected the tax department the tax department, because if you have a home-based business in any town in Vermont, then when you complete your, um, uh, oh, I'm totally true blank, your uh, homestead rebate, thank you, I'm like, yeah. claim, you quote in there, do you have, is it 20% business? Is it 5% business? And so I did ask him, I said, how does this work? Because do they have to claim that part of their house is a business? But he didn't know the answer. He was going to reach out to the tax department. But once yeah, I would. realized that they were under required agricultural practices, so this becomes an accessory on-farm business, I actually don't think they have to. Yeah. But he said he would reach out to the state. He didn't. He said, that's actually a good question. I don't, And I don't know the answer. I should. So he was going to reach out. I haven't heard back from him. But it's an accessory on-farm business, which means they're going to be under the ag and our current zoning regulations wouldn't apply and also the state statute is very specific saying that um regulated the same way as farming and not development for permitting crops so in my my you have no i could be wrong but i thought to. a year ago when this original license was granted that we didn't make any motion on that. It just you didn't because you did not have a cannabis control board yet. But I thought the cannabis control board was only for retail. No, nope. it's for all permits. It, mm. But what happens is, so that's why they sent it to you, and that's yeah. what it says in the cover letter. So what happens is, as soon as as soon as you signed and we submitted the resolution for the cannabis control board, then they come to you. And so yes, it's retail, but it's also these, and it's really more of a in this case just pretty much a blessing and the retail would just be whether or not they're adhering to the retail regulations for your town but the state law is clear you cannot zone out cannabis so it's just a uh, we do with no control right just like alcohol i mean yep second Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Still, just don't like this. It's hard to wrap your head around some of the things. I mean, and that's why, like, individuals that come here to ask questions that seem pretty simple based yeah. are not so simple based because. <laughs> yeah. The state does so many things that don't mm -hmm. even make any sense, right? Yeah. I mean, the only reason why we, you know, the only reason why we had to vote, well, we had to vote as a town to either allow or not allow retail sales. And then once you did that, then you had to vote if you wanted to have a cannabis control board or not, right? Mm -hmm. But that was right. based on retail sales. And, yeah. and the year prior to that, you couldn't even talk about cultivation growth. Being out, like, we, we couldn't even talk about that. Right. You know, even though it is, like you said... At the end of the day, we have no power. It's a rubber stamp, right? Mm -hmm. As long as they're adhering to all their, so I mean, it's like, whoa. yeah. We, if it comes what does us, the board really do? If it comes you know, to us, like we have to say yes. Yeah. You know, Basically. pretty much. I mean, if it's a retail, then obviously we'll go through it on a zoning aspect to make sure it adheres to all the zoning. But yeah, I mean, people forget that you know Vermont is a Dillon's rule state, so yeah. we only have the authority granted to us by the state. You know, we're not mm. like other free wheelers who get to do what they want. Mm. So yeah, it is. A, it's an interesting process but um you know and i don't know how much last permit we did we got 200 bucks <laughs> i don't i don't know if the small tier is a different which amount. it all went to the state <laughs> yeah. well it came to, we, just, we got and that's the thing is like you know until mm -hmm. you get involved in local government like yeah. just it, some of the things that you just assume are very simple yeah not. you know in your head <laughs> now you get in this chair and you go well, that doesn't make any sense like mm -hmm. it you know, it's like, exactly. you know, like the policing and all these things that we talk about. We're like, oh my God, it doesn't even make any sense. Like, mm -hmm. why do they got to make this so difficult? Yeah, true. And that is definitely one of them. So, talking about things that don't make a lot of sense health insurance. Yep. Goes up and up and up. It and does. Up and up and up and up. And it's true. So, we had this uh, discussion at the last select board meeting, I, mm -hmm. I think, and you guys had talked about, you know, what we're, the new rates were out. Mm -hmm. And it, 
came time for it actually just coincidentally i got the package to sign and so i compared the current plans that are out to for the same coverage for the employees from and it makes sense to move to blue cross blue shield we actually left blue cross blue shield for this reason to yeah. go to mvp at one point probably mm-hmm. three years ago maybe mm-hmm. um a few years because yeah. of the rate increase so i've given you the Ray, obviously the when you were acting town manager was i oh, yeah right. it was the year you were acting could be that i was acting we changed i was yeah now when she's playing so that's right yeah. now it's yeah. a whole thing so the mvp <laughs> the for the blue cross blue shield the deductible yeah. is 2850 for a single for mvp it's 3000 obviously it's a the larger increase it's a mvp is a 12.11 one increase for a family plan over last year and Blue Cross Blue Shield would be a 7.64% increase. I know that we talked about, or Chris actually specifically had such talked about how some companies, his company are changing so that the employee is paying more of a, of a share or you know, premium. You know, I want to say it took us a year to find an employee last time at our last opening. And I think that it's difficult to cut benefits. I will say I came when I came here, one of the reasons I was taking a salary cut, but the benefits were going to make me whole. That was part of my decision. Um, I feel like you have some long-term employees that are on this. They were hired under this plan. If you're interested in making a change moving forward, then maybe that's a change you make via the personnel policy, just like you did with sick time. You said as any employee hired after July or January, whatever the date is, X will no longer be paid out their sick time upon, um, you know, termination or, or, or they leave to go somewhere mm-hmm. else um, under good circumstances. So that's my thought process is I, I have been having this, you know, conversation for I don't know, 18, 19 years. It's very difficult to make something that is inequitable, equitable. And that's the way I feel about health insurance. But my recommendation is to leave the coverage the same, move to Blue Cross Blue Shield. And if you choose to make a different decision then i think you should do it by amending the personnel policy so it affects people um new hires which i'm not thrilled about because i i have my eyes on stealing an employee the from only, another town the, but, only, the only way that will ever work is every, everybody has to do it at the same time yeah that's the only way that would ever work well and I, I think it's difficult i i feel like if they were hired they were hired with what they have now if someone was made a choice to come here knowing they were going to have to pay all their deductible or 5% of their premium, then they made it, then they made a knowledgeable choice. It wasn't something taken away from them. Um, I, so I feel like if you're going to institute it, that would be the only fair way to institute it. So when they came, they knew, yes, they're being treated differently, but they are, I'm treated differently than a longer term employee. Because when I came uh, after the deadline, you no longer paid out sick time, which makes sense to me, but but I came on after. So I feel like that would be your best way to kind of to, if you, if that was a direction you wanted to move yourself in. And I think that would be the best and most fair because people would come, they're signing on the dotted line saying, I know this instead of being here, taking advantage of something and then having it changed. But again, that's my opinion. Rock of ages contract was like some of the old timers still had the jy plan and they wanted to keep that Mm -hmm. and everybody else was going to another plan so if you wanted the jy instead of paying 20 percent of your insurance you were going to pay 25 and most of them jumped on it because it was was a cadillac plan Mm -hmm. but now with the new hires there's a jy that's probably phased out by now then everybody had the regular blue cross but the newer people coming on have like the bottom middle bottom tier Mm -hmm. but that's the new hires that are coming on, but everybody else can yeah. keep their their thing. You can't you can't change yeah. them in midstream. We did change from Blue Cross Blue Shield to Cigna, and our deductibles were a little bit higher, but everybody got a quarter an hour raise when that was fifteen years ago, mm-hmm. and so that accumulates over and over and over every year. Plus your overtime, right? So they made up for it with that quarter of an hour which doesn't sound like much in 2023 but in 2008 i think it was it made a it made a pretty big and it's interesting where you're uh, another town that i work for did the same thing and i'm sitting there going why didn't you just pay the premium you had more control over that Mm -hmm. now all of a sudden joe schmo gets the raise 
plus it's on OT plus. So how much more you, you could have just eaten the premium. I was, you know, I never broke out the math, but I was always well, I, interested it's in getting to the point where that that's not true anymore. When you got a, a 33, 34, $35,000, yeah, $16, $16 an hour, uh, 34, that, that's uh, 1750 an hour. Yeah. I, I took the number and divided it by, <laughs> 2000, by 2080 hours and it was 16 bucks and some change. As, but, long, <clears throat> as long as we insist in this country on having employer provided health insurance, I think we need to do that hmm. for our folks. Yeah, it's and yeah. I, that's just my. I think the, ultimately the solution is to move away from employer provided health insurance. I know when the exchange started in Vermont a few years ago, as a municipality where I was at the time, we were like, "Yes, we are going to drop our insurance. We're going to give everybody X amount of dollars to go into the exchange." And then we they didn't allow municipalities to do that, and and we. We were calculating numbers, thinking the savings it was going to be to, you know, for us, but it didn't end up panning out that way. And, but it is, it's a big benefit. I, I know personally that people here really appreciate this and, so, and they, and I also have told people, look, you know, it depends. It's on, we don't give out raises um, just because you were here another year. And this is one thing that we talk about. And I've told all employees, we're looking at a very large increase in health insurance and what it is and what it is when I did everybody's evaluations this year. I said, this is your base salary. This is what we pay in retirement. This is what we pay in um, uh, you know, health and dental. Our dental fees did not go up. And we do tell them and say, you know what? You want to go somewhere. Don't be looking at your salary. This is your package. Yeah, total compensation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's what yeah. I wrote on the back of everybody's evaluation saying yeah, this so is where you're at. with union contracts, you know, mm -hmm. and somebody on a family mm -hmm. plan was actually, we all paid the same amount. When I first started, if you were a single person, you had no copay mm -hmm. because the person with a family plan, but at the time they wanted a family man because he was reliable and the single person was hung over. So, <laughs> but, and it made it even, but. Towards mm -hmm. the end, we paid everybody paid twenty percent, but yet the guy that had or the woman that had the family plan, they were actually getting like six or seven hundred dollars a month more mm -hmm. in benefits Absolutely. than a single person. And that's the way it is but, here, yeah. and that's the yeah. way it was in towns that I've been or and done the research before. And it, you know, it's kind of one of those things that back in the day, you went to a town, you got low salary, but the benefits were good, and now. Mm -hmm. People are, the wages for us are hard to keep up with, you know, especially CDL rates. So I always lean on hard on the fact that, hey, let me tell you how much we pay out in your benefits. So yeah, it may not put bread on the table, but it's a big, when you go to, go to leave, go shop around, make sure you're, you're looking at the same oh, yeah, penny yeah. package. Yeah, yeah we always had it. I wasn't aware it was like my brother-in-law retired. Mm-hmm. And that pension check he gets where he's bitching about $2 an hour less than I would be making is twenty five hundred dollars a month more than I'm getting now. Mm -hmm. So really, mm -hmm. is it worth that two dollars? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, because he again yeah. total compensation. Exactly. You really have to look at that. And the package that we have, um, obviously when uh visas is taken out pre tax. So when we draw and we retire, we have to pay tax mm -hmm. on it. Is there any other differences on here? Um the health okay. saving plan is a little different. No, nope. it's, it's a HRA. It's the same. I asked the gentleman at Blue Cross Blue Shield if there was a IRS rule at time where you couldn't have an HSA if you had an HRA, and he was kind of looking into it a little bit and to how, see. And how easy is it to just switch plans? I, I'm gonna. I'll write to Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'll let them know. And it's it's a lot. Everybody has to. You know, all the employees. Well, are I think the point I'm getting to is, what? you know, I've been. Through, but I don't think I've it's been bad. through enough of these now, and yeah, you know, like when we did this, whatever, five years ago. It actually went well. Or whatever. But what I'm saying is it's always like, oh, look, you know, five years ago, we were like, oh, look, MVP is only 7% and Blue Cross Blue Shield is 12%. Oh, year, it'll right? Flip again. And then yeah. the next year, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you get, you get on with them and all of a sudden yeah. their rates go up. Yeah. And, you know, Blue Cross Blue Shield might be 7% this year. They might be 13% next year. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So it's like, at this point, I mean. It's an undertaking. At, my at what we may save here, which is is not a lot of money when you're talking, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe when you're talking, how many how many employees do we have on health insurance? We have. I, I think I said that. Let me look. I did. 
We have, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did, I wrote it to him thinking right here. Um, we currently have four family plans and three single plans. We only have seven people on insurance. Right. So, we got rid so, of the so right now we're looking at, if we made this switch for our budget season, yeah, we'd save. it would potentially save us $7,000 yep. Yes. in this budget that we're going to propose. Yep. But then it could, you know, then we could be off by 10,000 the next time around. It's, so yeah, we've been we, managed it, to stick for three years, but, but yeah. it's a competitive business. It's a competitive industry. And so next year, if the rates come in, then switch back. Do we have a, do you have a, we don't always lose the insurance companies any loyalty. No, well, it's, and it's that's hard. what I'm just saying. Like if, if it's a pain to, yeah, well, swap it over and there, then. Some sort you know. Yeah, well, I'll, if we if you decide to switch, then I'll let the gentleman know at Blue Cross Blue Shield tomorrow, and I'm sure he'll send us. You know, he already sent a sizable package. You know, and, it is. I mean, and then all the employees are going to have to come in, fill all the paperwork out. Right. Most of, I don't. Blue and Cross then each Blue employee has to go to every place they go to and say, "Oh, I got a new card." And I got, you know, I mean, like, oh yeah, they ask for it. It, it sounds like it's not a lot, but it is. And it's like you go to the doctor's. You know. <laughs> yeah. Every time I go to CVMC for anything, I yeah. got to give them my card. And yeah. It's the same card that I've never And also, too, what I well, not obviously, the only care. risk here that I cannot say for sure because it's none of my business is is somebody going to become now their regular doctor out of their provider network? I would assume not. I would like to assume that all doctors take that take MVP take Blue Cross Blue Shield, but it's yeah, not no. in my purview to know. Right. who's someone sees as a doctor yes. that's not I my business it'd be more the other way around i have no idea i'm just saying that's the i could verify coverage for coverage and i spent a lot of time and the gentleman answered a whole bunch of questions and and it was very helpful but that i can't say but i i mean blue cross it, it's hard vermont you have two choices blue cross blue shield mvp okay. none game over unless you're a big company we like like where you can you it can goes. you're international right. and you can or, or national and you can you know, go outside and get your insurance, but we can. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, in this case, I mean, if it's the burden isn't too great, it's on and, and, you know, it'll end up saving us like um, a third of a penny on the tax rate. The by switching. majority of the burden falls on the employee. And yeah, me. Well, or somebody's got to, I got to pass it on gotta, to someone. We got to make sure all the paperwork's in. All the new paperwork and, and make sure everybody's in. And and then again, I mean, next year it could be flip flopped, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's yep, it's just like anything. So yep. I don't know. Anybody have any? Uh, and I will say, I did want to say this is that I made a note here for you, but um, the town spent fifty three percent of our share of the HRA. So just because you know we pay our share of the HRA first, um, current we pay the first, you know, fifty percent of their deductible, um. It does say we've only spent fifty three percent of our share of the HRA, as, so which is nice to know. Mm -hmm. Is that, that on a fiscal year or a calendar year? Calendar. Calendar. Oh, yeah. good, good. Yep. So, um, you know, so that's something too. That's a savings that you do have that I haven't built in here. Right. So if you take out that amount of money, it drops that percentage even more. Mm -hmm. So is it a hassle to change? It's a hassle for us. Yeah, we're gonna. Have, I'm gonna have to put somebody not me, somebody in charge of making sure everybody's paperwork's in and upload because Blue Cross isn't sending somebody here to do this. We'll Sounds like we need ourselves. a full-time police officer that's <laughs> also the, the recreational director who, who oh, does the insurance. In so I think we're almost to that position. <laughs> and human resources. Do they or have her. a CDL? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they can fly in the wintertime, right? Yeah. yeah they, they, they <laughs> fly with the blue lights on. And they can be a road commissioner. Yeah. Blue Cross. Blue Cross. Blue Shield. I would second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any of us are here three, four mm -hmm. years down yeah. the road. We'll be discussing yeah, again, we'll the other direction. about this moment. Yeah. Again, we'll say. Therese is like, I'm still it's here. <laughs> well, I was well, like, let me tell you. I could have signed off on MVP, but you guys brought it up. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not doing that now. All right. Well, uh, July so, blood event stuff, and just so just a disclaimer, just so that individuals know, it's 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 kind of again, it's one of those things when these events. I mean, we have the normal maintenance that goes on in our roads that can be good, not so good, and mm -hmm. um, the flood events, especially when they're large events that come with 
um, state or federal dollars to them, they they become very convoluted. So um, some of it is just as fast as like the emergency, like right out of the gate of the storm is go out, fix it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's the next phase, which is, okay, you can fix it, but only up to this point. And then, okay, everything now has to be bid out. So the challenge that we have with the flood event, as you see, initially it's get people so that they're able to get out of their homes. So that's the first piece. That's the emergency piece. And then the second piece is we have a small window to repair certain projects until they say you can't do that anymore. You must bid it. So we we did that. Um, yeah, you can adjust. It's really just yeah. So you temporary, put, even just grading or we're putting some road down to get yeah. people out is really where so, I mean, they you pretty much do. had like you know the first let's say. Well, for us, luckily, the first two or three days after the event was really the emergency phase of getting people accessibility in and out of their homes. All the roads opened up in one manner or another. And then, you know, through July into August was kind of doing what they still call the emergency work. Mm -hmm. So you could literally just go and say, okay, um, uh, Lindley, I want you to go up and take care of those two roads. And I'm going to send, you know, Therese up to take care of those roads. And you start putting people in place. And then... Then once you come to about August is when they kind of put the brakes on. They say, okay, well, now you need to go out and all that damage you surveyed that you haven't done, you need to bid it. Mm-hmm. And then it just slows way down. Um, yeah. The process just stops. And people are like, why aren't you guys doing anything? You know, because huh. you see a lot of work been going on and now all of a sudden it stops. Because you go from emergency to <clears throat> like kind of emergent. And then, of course, it yeah. kept raining for us. And then, yeah, everything so where to at, where at the gate you might have had five contractors on five different roads doing work now you have to bid it so let's say one contractor gets all five things now obviously they're going to do like one before (laughs) they do the other so there there becomes different you know caveats to the whole thing and and where we're at now is you know we're finishing up on the biddable work um and and then and then to even convolute it a little bit more is we have a piece of roadway in our town that is under federal highway um when i say jurisdiction but they they oversee it um it used to be a you know a corridor road that was a hundred percent federal highway that somehow we got conned into taking and we received that and now we're in charge of the maintenance on that road and and so um usually when things happen on that road it's kind of majorly and then there's the the process to do anything at that point is oh we need to get a study and we need to get this and that and yeah. before you can change the culvert so we had to spend a month at or least you're talking two, about Camp Brook Camp Brook so like Camp yeah. Brook was like a month or two just getting yeah all the strings put together to then be, be able to bid it and we bid the work about two weeks ago yeah um yeah two the bids were out and then but remember because of that that's since federal <clears throat> highway you have the federal highway people are yeah. steering that ship and but as as frustrating as it is you get a hundred percent of that money yeah. we're gonna have a million dollars into that road and we as and, and, and you know as residents won't pay a dime so it it's it's insane yeah. a little bit so but qu- a question trees um in all of the stuff with fema and federal highway and state etc mm-hmm. do you have anything like a spreadsheet <laughs> oh yeah do we have a spreadsheet that says mm-hmm. these are the this these are the the roads that were impacted by the floods mm-hmm. and this is when we worked on it and this is when it was done yes oh yeah so and some let me let me well, just so show you the reason i'm asking here's is, the picture of that pothole and that this wash out is FEMA. <laughs> and that's yeah but, but yes yeah, of course i do i have me... a master spreadsheet the, the day we rolled it out i had one within a week right so <laughs> the reason i'm asking uh-huh. is because I think it would be helpful in addition to what we're doing now, which is mm-hmm. uh, going back again over all the work we've done, is to just say, here's the spreadsheet. We have 75 roads, whatever, yeah. that we 
that have done X amount of work on. These roads are finished. These roads are not. This is that that to me would be a more effective report on how we've done with the flood damage than each sitting here and going through this is where we are with this road, this road, this road, because it would give me the whole picture. Sure, I have all it at once. Right. Mm -hmm. So you could say, yeah, 40 roads were not touched or were not damaged. 30 were, well, out of the 30, the we've done were. 27 well, well, of them. Well, but it, it yeah. gives me a, so this is sure. the progress we've made. I can print it for you um, for the next, pa the next select board meeting. So I can tell you the progress that we have made, and this might not cover all of them because, it, again, it's challenging because some of the work got done initially, some of it got bid out, some of it, you know, and so and, we and I and I'm not asking for a verbal report. As a matter of fact, I'm asking not for a verbal report. Mm -hmm. I can give it a spreadsheet. I'm asking for this is the big picture. Yeah. Yeah, we and did this it. Is what it looks like because that's how we had to submit it to to FEMA. That's how you had to submit it to FEMA or whatever. And then we continue, but I just want to make a point here that when, like, right now, obviously, I'm in the weeds. I mean, I work Friday, I work Saturday, I'm going on vacation, but this, there's no other way to say it. this is asinine. What is in here is they have a sheet. I have to go through every time card. They have a sheet for a uh, labor summary. So they have a sheet for equipment summary, for material summary. So you go through every single payroll. I All right, so each guy, thank, they're all good at it. AJ's driving this truck. He hauled this amount of material to this road. That is a labor sheet, an equipment sheet, and a material sheet. And you have to say where it's going, how many hours they work, and I'm finally how caught up went, on that. How much left? And and the only other project in here is there's the smallest folder is woodland. So this this, this is, is not is just it, one. Row. This basically isn't the bid stuff. No, this is mostly that, the stuff that we did. Just, what we'd say. I just emergency. think it's important for people to see that yeah. when I say no, we can't do that. We're not having our first budget meeting until December. And I did well aside from Chris's green folder the stuff that Chris did. I've done all that paperwork. And so I have talked to the state. I talked to FEMA. I talked to uh, Two Rivers. And I said, you know what? I'm going to get all this done. And in January, I'm coming for you. Because the state of Vermont has the software. They have on tablets. This gentleman showed up. God bless him. But he showed up working for the state. He has a tablet. He went out to a site. He took photos and that had the photos, the GPS, he put in the measurements and he came up with an estimate. We're running around with a slide rule and an abacus and a piece of, you know, pencil and a notebook out there. And the spreadsheet you've seen it this long, right. we go out to every single location. We've climbed down banks and, you know, and, you know, stepping in holes and, and you have to put every single spot, beginning, ending GPS. And we do it in pencil. The guys come in. The gate gave me their section, we, and then I put it into a spreadsheet, and I talked to Carlos from FEMA, and I said, listen, there's got to be a better way. And he said, and he sent me an Excel spreadsheet. I'm like, I already have an Excel spreadsheet that I wrote, so that I had given to him. And so, but all these forms, and they don't continue, so when you run out of lines, and then you have all the backup for all these, and so... <clears throat> And this is I have this isn't federal highway, so I guess I just want people to realize, especially the select board, that we're doing this all this paperwork. And so I have told all the state of Vermont, Two Rivers, somebody else at the state. I said, I'm coming for you because I want that software. You tell us we got to prove this permit, <laughs> that permit. We're Dylan's rural state. Then give us the tools that you have to do the job easier. All of our employees downloaded, excuse me, Soul Locator. So we took photos that had the GPS on them. Then you come in with your phone. You have to upload those to a I'm like rubbing two sticks together to start a fire. It's the craziest thing. I, I, so I, we will be fighting the good fight, all of us. And, 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 <laughs> it's and crazy. I'm trying to. No, minimize. Yeah. Uh, 
to me. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can give it to you guys when it's back. A, a summary. It might be good for you to see it Absolutely. because then you can be like, wow. <laughs> well, I've noticed just doing payables <clears throat> and payroll one every other week, all the time sheets with stuff on it. And until July 10th, it was just, you yeah, just their hours. Thin. And now they're, you know, like AJ's and mortgage, their little boxes are like, <clears throat> how small can <clears throat> they write? And the payables with this company and that company and the gravel and, and it's just... And it has been, and it's, and then you're trying to track it. And it was actually funny because the guys gave me, you know, obviously they were tracking their materials and we had the whole conversation. We knew the, it was coming. We did all of our preparedness up front. And then I went through all of their material sheets. I knew what we had for tonnage, what we had, what we bought. And I went back to him. I said, I had it all clipped together like this. And I said, here you go. Doesn't match. You I'm done. I'm tapping out. You figure out where your material is. Well, AJ was figured it out. He took his truck down and weighed it at the transfer station. And he said, because he was like, oh, we've written everything. I said, I'm off. You find it. Sure. And he said, we as we underestimated the amount of tonnage that we were hauling. So I was like, okay. So he came back and then he updated all of his numbers. But it's it's just crazy to me. And then people are like, well, what have you been doing? I'm like, well, between answering email and doing FEMA, <clears throat> and I just barely caught up on all my grant reimbursements to try to get, you know, this is, we have a $2.5 million water project going and all the other stuff to try to play catch up. And, uh, but it's not, so I'm telling but you, come just... January, February, we're fighting this fight. We're going to legislative breakfast. I don't care if we have to camp out of state. I want that software. And I don't want it just for Bethel. I want it for everybody. Because I have talked to multiple towns that didn't have the staff that we have or the ability that we have that we've been through it right. before. But and they're really why, hurting. Yeah, no, I'm happy to give it to you. Oh, because... we have spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But too many. Because I don't want to add work. No, no, I have it. You. I just, but that, yeah. it gives me a way to look at the big picture. I mean, I overall, so, yeah. I mean, we're, we're in a pretty good, pretty good. position. Um, we hope to have. We hope to have all the work finished by the end of this month. Um, a majority of the work has been finished to date. Yep. Um, we have a couple of the bigger projects that are out right now because they had to go through the long bid phase, which for the most part is impacting Camp Road. Road. Um, we do have a couple of other smaller projects going on that we're finishing some of the other areas. Um, you know, the, the good thing is uh, some of the areas needed to be upgraded better so we got that going for us um the, the challenge we've had is you know we've had to take our road crew away from doing their normal maintenance basically the whole summer because this happened in july so it's mm -hmm. um, they've had to be assisting other contractors to get the work done so they may be hauling gravel for the day they might be helping out putting stick pipe in the you know so they've been I wouldn't say their whole time, but probably half their time has been devoted to FEMA since yeah. July. We also now have we have thing. we have <clears throat> had some contractors come in to do some of the work that we normally would do some some grade and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's been going on behind the scenes, but but um, but again, it's just a three person garage it's as a, well. It's so it's yeah, um, and and most of our contractors are one or two person identities, so it's yep. not like they come with ten people. Yeah. And all the toys they might have, you know, one or two pieces of equipment and they need yeah. some help with something or um so I, I I no, I think we, you know, overall that the work and again, FEMA is like fix exactly what is broken. Like sometimes it's like, well, we fixed this, but this really kind of needs to be done as a result, and FEMA doesn't pay for that. So sometimes when you're driving down the road, you might say, well, why didn't they just fix that too? Well, that's because FEMA doesn't pay for that. That would be something that would be on our, our dime, which at times we have done on our own yeah. dime because it makes sense yeah. and do it while we're there. But um, uh, so the, um, when it comes down, we'll just say quadrant. So like the West quadrant, which was uh, Whittier, Lilliesville, Ringe, there, little piece of camp bell, um, that, um, Brink, uh, those were ones that we had FEMA associated projects. Those have been finished according to FEMA standards. Um, there's 
things that we had a touch up there um, that we'll try to do. Um, woodland, which was, you know, it's a little animal because that <clears throat> road basically was wiped off the face of the earth. That's back together again for now. Um, so that that is done. Um, the uh, Cleveland Brook is, which that was another road that was almost wiped off the face of the earth. <laughs> and that was reconstructed and that is all open. Um, we should have some guardrails being done at the end of the week to finish that up. Um, oh, I actually with the, the West quadrant was also Dunham road, which was hit very hard mm -hmm. and a little piece, uh, the tail end of uh sugar, uh, so, hill yeah. that we're just waiting for some guardrail there. Um, the, you know, the North road piece, which was, you know, I wasn't directly a part of, but that, yeah, that has been, has been done. Um, it's there finished. were some pieces up in the Christian Hills section that have been um, going on, yeah. finished or almost we're still, finished. Yeah, I'm still waiting on, on Perm, but that'll wrap up here in the next couple of weeks. Not here yet. I got it. It's here. Yeah, it must have just came because the other day I went up and that great big long one's up there. Oh, yeah, ours um, is here. We finished up uh, the, well, not finished, but working on finishing the pea vine sand hill pieces. We're just waiting on finishing some graveling. Um, and then um, Abbott, Abbott Road, a uh, little piece of uh, Old Route 12 and um, Fish Hill we're finishing now. So, I, I mean, I think overall, I mean, it's just, it, it really is, um, until you've gone through the process, quite the undertaking. It, it's really overwhelming when you get going on. It, it's definitely one of those projects that if you look at it like this, you're you're going to be so overwhelmed and probably okay. get anxiety and want to hide under mm -hmm. your desk. I'm not being critical. Yeah. But when you start, no, hey, not, no. but all those little pieces, it's like, it's just amazing how much work goes into it. And talking just with our neighbors, not even other towns, but just our neighboring towns, they're just, they're just starting to do some work. Like they, we've been doing work since like, you since know, July. Yeah. July and August. Like they're, <laughs> they're literally just starting to do some work. I mean, and you know, mother nature's, knocking on the door so mm -hmm. um now yeah. i will say that the reason why we are not the two our own horns but we've been through it before so mm -hmm. like i guarantee if if nobody here had been through it before yeah. we'd be struggling and uh, like 2019 you yeah. had just come in uh -huh. i had never done one before i mean it was I figured it out as we went and and now uh -huh. this time we had kind of our ducks in a row because we, we knew what they were in. looking for yeah um but it, you know, it's one of those things that I think we had talked about at the last meeting, meeting before of it, it's definitely one of those things that we need to make sure it's passed down mm -hmm. because it's going to continue to happen in this town. Yeah. So we need to make sure that the next administration or the next select board understands yeah. that whole FEMA process because it is, it's a full-time or two full-time positions in its own, like yeah. just yeah. to keep up with them. And people too, you know, we do this in the emergency. Let us not forget, you know, we had 15 or 17 people stranded. Like the day we were prepped for the flood, we had 15 or 17 people, let's go with 15 people stranded come Tuesday morning. So we're all in here and we're figuring out who is it? Who do we have to get out first? How fast can we get them out? And by the end of that day, we had everybody out but one person. Luckily, that woman was smart. She'd been through it before. She parked somewhere else. So she could kind of hike out. So she could get to her car to go where she needed to go. But then, so we had, so we got her out the next. So, I mean, you know, when people complain about their road, it's like, listen, you know, our first priority is life safety. And we were, during that storm, the fire department was rescuing people. In some scenarios where the fire chief was like, look, you called, we came, we're, we can't come back for you. You come now or you're staying and I won't put men in jeopardy to come back. And so, you know, we had that situation. We also had people, we were sending our people to Chelsea to help do rescues because Chelsea was having, you know, issues. And, um, you know, so I think people forget that it, yeah, it's a road and you can complain you were inconvenienced, but you know, Did we you were saving people. That, that, that had a flood and, and he died and went to heaven. And said it the I have. <laughs> I sent a boat. I, I sent a boat. I sent a helicopter and you wouldn't come. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I often, I like that one. But yeah, so. But I, I think uh, we are getting there. It's It's been a long road to get there. And, it, and there's clearly going to be things that just, 
you know, maintenance stuff that's not going to get done before winter yep. that we'd like them to be done. But and I understand that, but I know two specific things that are going to cost us a lot of money. I mean, holes this deep that are when they put snow on them, you're going to drive that big duck in there. Well, if that's perm, Boom. we're we're fixing perm. We still have perms on the list, Finley's on the list, and um, there's a section on Finley perm and I'm missing one. We're done on Daring Road where Dylan fixed that. He did put a head wall on the culvert. Now there's a big, just as big a hole. Yeah. Where the truck is going to drive right into that one too. All right. Well, I'll let them know. Daring over head wall. Um, because was your other one Perm? Yeah, that one. Yeah, I know. And we'll <laughs> just, be done. Just, we'll get there. It took me a month I to know, get the culvert. Know, you just roll. Deep breaths, Dave. Deep breaths. Stop <laughs> driving down there. Yes, that would be my recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> well, most. I know I went and saw them on Friday. I knew they were moving. So so we're getting there. And then, you know, the Camp Brook Road is the last hurrah. I mean, yep. it, it's the biggest of the projects that's going to inconvenience the most amount of people because it's on a yep. major throughway uh, over the mountain. And just like it's inconveniencing people on the Rochester side from coming so over. And if we could, or this the detour signs do they begin at the bottom of the hill yep they're both on on the rochester side right at the green i went to rochester on friday and yeah, part of my visit was to double check the signage yeah yep okay. we have big message boards right there and we did reach out to jay mcdonald and suggest that they put a road closure at the trailer park or at Knott's sugar farm or sugar house because people could turn around right there um, so we did make that suggestion, but they, Dubois and King had drafted a traffic plan, which the state approved and, and, um, so they're, they're managing it. I did get a message a couple of times that signs have been out. As soon as I get the message to Jay McDonald, they go, they go out and deal with it. And I still do not have a schedule for the culvert. The large culvert will do that. They will also do below pond road, but I figured they need to get into the top one and figure that out before they're going to give me a schedule. And the second they did come in at 244,000. I have a $200,000 grant. You know what? It was better than the 600 that I was, or more I was looking for, you know, so we had, so we had, <clears throat> To convolute it anymore. So no. on Camp Brook Road, it's it's our responsibility. The Federal Highway kind of oversees it. Mm -hmm. And what happens is if it's something that maybe we should have done that Federal Highway now doesn't want to take part in. So we have a culvert that probably should have had or had deferred maintenance to that should probably have been um maintained better and we had the flood event one of those culverts federal highway now looks in it and says eh, that's deferred maintenance we're not going to cover it well because federal highway says they're not going to cover it then fema goes eh, we're not going to cover it either yeah, so uh, yeah they don't and fema and highway. federal highway even though they're both federal they don't work together so if federal highway covers it then fema won't cover it or you know yeah. and in this case because federal highways threw their hands up saying nope that's you know then FEMA wouldn't even look at it. So it just became ours, dumped on our lap to fix. Yep. You know, um, so luckily we were able to shift around a grant that we were going to use for P-Vine. Yeah. Um, so the P-Vine temporary bridge will still be temporary bridge um, for, I don't know. I'll write ever. that. I'll write that. Um, no, I'll write this not <laughs> a structures grant next year. Well, um, so we had to shift that and luckily um, initially they were talking a half a million dollars or more to fix the culvert that we have. And then the, the district was able to um, loan us a multi-plate, <laughs> uh, a multi-plate cul culvert for there. And uh, the contract's doing the upper one's going to do the bottom one for us. Are they going to come take it back? Oh, once it's in, <laughs> possession is nine tenths of the law. So it's once there. it's in the ground, if they want to come reclaim it, it's theirs. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah exactly. once we put it in the ground, I don't think they're coming to get it, but. Um, no. yeah. But it, it, it you know, these things are, are crazy. Like you know, 2019, you know, we had quite a bit of flooding, um, not on this side scale, but I mean, we still have a bridge that we haven't put in um, right. that's going still in. in the works because it just takes forever to get everything. It is going in, to be doing that. In order. Right 
Uh, that's a $1.1 million bridge that will pay 12.5% of its Pinello bridge. Yeah, it'll go in see her. It's going out to bid and it'll go on just in time to, to see it go out again. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's not funny. It's, but can we put yeah. that road up before that happens? No, <laughs> you're going to own it for a while. It's already been done. This will guys like me up. Yeah, hold that bridge, put a D9 in there for two days, drop that riverbed four feet. Mm -hmm. I'll put a bridge in and forget about it. I'll put you in a room alone with Jaron Borg and instead of the state and river engineer. I'll call the police. I'll call the cops in advance. I know it's it's I tell you, Dave. Sometimes common sense just left, just got on a train and left Vermont. Thank you, Chris, for all the work you've done to us. Yeah, I mean that's. Yeah, kinda, I'm kind of at the end of my rope at this point. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm trying to get things buttoned up at work. And yeah. then I hurt my arm hammering a grade stake there a couple weeks ago. It wasn't, it's not town. Well, yeah. it was, it was, I was hammering yeah, your grade stakes, but it was like more. just overused for the year. And now, well, and I was grumpy. I can't just you know what he so. was really mad was when he found out that another town hired someone and they're paying that gentleman a percentage of the work. I mean, we're looking at over a million, you know, in work. And Chris is like, oh, like this guy's getting a percentage of the cut. Yeah. This, guy's, this like, guy's getting the retirement plan. So yeah. Chris was like, next time. I don't understand why people me. would do that. Oh, too funny. But, <laughs> anything that we didn't cover in the town manager's report? So there's a couple things. One I thought was a really smart comment uh from a gentleman on sand hill he tuned in via zoom and was listening and he he just he made a really good point sometimes when we're discussing these topics it's not our first visit so it becomes rote so if you are just tuning into a meeting um we've been talking about sand hill for you know a year year and a half and so if you just tune in we're not really giving any history. We're just kind of talking about the aspect that we're discussing. So I thought he made a really good point that I think it's something at times we need to be more cognizant of. Um, yes, they have the ability to go back and read minutes, et cetera. But I think he made a really valid point that sometimes we're speaking about a topic that we're so well versed in. We don't think about that. So I, I thought it was a great point. Mm -hmm. And appreciated him saying that. Um, the other thing is, I'm going to be out of state from Wednesday of this week until Tuesday afternoon. So during that time, Dave Altrigetti, the fire chief, will be the emergency management director. I told him if it something burns, he can handle it. If it floods, he's to call Morgan and Chris Jarvis. And I also told the office staff that if they had any issues that couldn't handle, that couldn't wait, I mean, in the past, you know, when Tim was alive, he would kind of help them or give them some guidance. I told him to call you, Chris, and um, yeah. if something came up that they Beyond needed duty. assistance with, well, that's, yeah, that add it to your hours. Time too. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so the other thing is, too, that I put in the packet is, and I'm not saying you have to make a decision about tonight, but I would really like you to think about it. I'd like to talk about the idea of deleting our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. This thing... I refuse to have one in another town. Um, it just causes so much strife within the office, within other staff. I think then between I see residents going at each other, it, it's really frustrating. And it takes up a lot of time because Kelly or Pam, somebody's monitoring it like 24 seven um, because if there's comments we need to hide or something's going on. And, you know, residents can contact us and receive uh, and request information in multiple ways. Town manager's office, you know, we're both open eight to four, but we have voicemail. Somebody can leave us a message 24 seven. They can email us 24 seven. People can stop by, which they do frequently. Um, they mail us notes, sometimes nice, sometimes not with their water checks or tax checks or whatever. Um, our website, is, they can um, see what's happening there. They can read all the committee minute, meeting minutes. We are currently working working on that's all right we're working on uh the new site we are a member of um front porch forum residents can also subscribe to front porch forum and the great thing about front porch forum is if two residents say are getting into something front porch forum monitors that and they will 
kick you out. Like, you know, if they, you know, which is somebody monitoring other than us. And um, Orca has our websites. They show, they record and show all the select board meetings. People can attend select board meetings, committee meetings, agendas in, are placed in three places. And it's it, it just has become at times just really frustrating and mm -hmm. difficult to manage. I want everybody to know everything. And if you pick up the phone, call me, I'll tell you whatever you want to know. 99% of what we do is public record. And if you want to know, I'll tell you. I have no problem with that and of all transparency. But Facebook can just be so caustic that, and when you're out there saying things about people that not just work for the town, but other residents, I, I, it bothers me, but especially when I have town employees that are so upset because some, you know, they're feeling like they're giving it their all. And then somebody's out there, you know, whatever, slandering them for lack of a better word. But I just feel like staff time, we're short staffed. I'm the only one who works full time for the town of Bethel in the office. I just feel like it, there's so much better use of that time than the Facebook page. And I'm not saying I don't want people to, I want people to know everything, whatever you want to know, but put the effort in and call me is there or email or ask. Is Facebook and is, put little nasty grams? Cause I've seen some nasty is stuff. There like, way, is yeah. there a way to make Facebook just like one way? I with, asked with all the comments, filters and stuff. Can you, I asked Kelly that? Can you she shut said, the comments off so that it's just whatever we want to put on there, we put on, but nobody Seth can comment? Seth Wilton had that issue with something, and I'm trying to remember. The woman's name is Victoria, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think she was deleting comments, and other people were writing stuff in. It's like, this is a town owned page. You can't delete our comment. And it was, yeah, and she. So it was a whole big mess over well, South Royal Texas. Before said, you well, came, we wrote a multi page social media. Yeah policy and part of it was how, when can we delete facebook posts when can we do this how do we archive them and uh, you know i refuse to learn facebook i'm sorry i just i refuse i refuse i refuse but i asked kelly about it and she felt that we had that option when we started the page that you could maybe be just visible there um but personally I would like to see people, we could encourage people to join <clears throat> Front Porch Forum. They monitor it. They monitor it. We're not monitoring it. You know, I get messages on Saturday from Pam. Oh, Trees, I'm sorry to bother you, but da -da -da -da. you know, I get them at night. I get them on the weekends. People, you know, saying that there's something on Front Porch Forum. Should we respond? What should we do? And I'm like, ah, you know, like, take it down. And so I said, and I talked to the staff about it. They actually approached me and they said, we want this gone. And mm -hmm. I said, I will have to ask the select board. I didn't start it. It was here when I got here or else I would have, you know, just about refused to start one because it just, the time is insane when we, and I'm paying people who are out up at night, you know, deleting posts or, or hiding posts so that they can talk to me about it the next day. I just, you know. It's I just feel like if you could harness that energy of evil for good, boy, we could really get a lot done. You so, know? <laughs> in a, in addition to Chris's question, um, are there town committees who have um, Facebook pages, social media pages? Yes, they and do. How does would that decision impact them? Well, they could keep theirs. Um, they're all run differently. The recreation has a page that D-Tree monitors that Lindsay Shell is going to be monitoring. And, um, you know, D-Tree has found it to be helpful when she's letting people know that the pool is open or closed, you know, if there's a thunderstorm or for people to clean off the skate park but she hasn't run into what we've run into at the town level i know that there's one for the um Peavine park and some smaller ones that aren't visited as much and again they all the people that agreed to run them are have to be listed as a social media manager and none of them have come to me with complaints um i just yeah i, I just no they're not sure. connected if ours goes I, down I theirs doesn't make sure if we make the decision and or mm -hmm. do should we make a decision that is town-wide mm -hmm. uh that we're not going to be involved oh. in social media i think that I mean, for that's another... Dietrich made a good point that she would like to keep theirs for the pool because front porch forum mouthful uh comes out about four o'clock i think in the afternoon so facebook she can say 
she could put out a message to tell somebody um, we're having a thunderstorm in the village because maybe you're not. And we don't want you to have to get in your car and drive all the way over here for a swimming lesson. But so she didn't, she hasn't had those issues with her, but the town page, I will say at times, you know, I mean, what I, I don't care, you know, I for agree. me personally, but the staff, it bothers me. I, I haven't been on the front page or the Facebook thread in the hall. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. I think it's, I think it's tricky. I mean, maybe it's, uh, maybe we could maybe just it's see a if topic just to bring back up and discuss a little further, but I mean, it, <clears throat> I don't know. It's it's a necessary evil in a way. It's you know it's a. Oh. Uh, I think we probably if you, if you interviewed people throughout the town and said where do you get most of your information, I I would imagine that Facebook was probably, the top Could place be. where they get their information from. Um, but at the same time, I just wonder if there's a way that we can. I wonder if we can use it. it. You know, can and we? use it in a way that we don't have to receive comments, but um, I, I can ask Kelly that. Cause my question is, can we, do, could we, I asked her if we could set comments. She said we'd had to make that decision in the beginning. I wonder if we, what about delete, deleting it and starting a new that's one? What that I'm you asking. Could just, I don't know. I don't know anything about If that was the only way you could do it, I got to think you could go into the settings and change something. But she, I do think it is a vital source of information. It doesn't have to be the only source, but it is a more lifetime immediate mm -hmm. one, and yeah. it is a go-to for a lot of people. Unfortunately, there are people making it such that we're questioning. Yeah, you know, is yeah. that yeah. worth what the yeah. cost is? I, I don't think so, but that's just my opinion. But I have publicly stated more than one occasion that I think Facebook is possibly. Do we, the do we feel volume, that? So. Do we feel that? But the issues are just certain bad actors, or. Is it more widespread that you can't control? Or? It's surprising. Sometimes it's really surprising. But sometimes you get like a niche of group of a couple people that really yeah. want it for everybody. Is it like that or is it just widespread? Actually, we've had a couple instances where it was like that. And then we've addressed that issue with some folks and that's kind of changed. It actually sometimes yeah. it just comes out. It is surprised as to what it is yeah. or what it's about. But let me ask Kelly to maybe there's somebody I don't know. Facebook must have somebody you can ask for help. Maybe no, there's a, no, 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 no. Okay. Well, maybe there is there's nobody. Well, you know, we could, I could ask her. You can write them an email or something. They'll yeah. never get back to you. Well, maybe what we could look at is she could, maybe she could set up, try setting up a, like a new look. page just to see, because it's different than a personal page. It's a business page. Yeah. So the rules are different, but maybe she could set up a, sample like a faux business to see if she can make those options and then maybe we just take ours down and reboot you know the new one i mean i think the nicest thing do you know oh see um, and you can make us the only profiles page we mention mm -hmm. comments because I cannot this one. Because we get tagged on stuff. So all of a sudden then there's a uh, whole yeah, that's yeah, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Well, I'm like, it makes my head spin. I'm like, I just you know, I just refuse to burn my brain. I mean, it's probably out, out of all the ones that we do use, if you're if you're really talking, if you want to send information out there that's almost real time. That's fine. I just Facebook's don't want the comments one back. It's usually tied to people's phones <laughs> and you know, they instantly get it. Right. And a lot of people are on it like all day long, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's Town of Bethel, then there's Bethel Community Forum, which, which is, yeah. I, I don't know who that is. That's not us. Off of there as well. Yeah. I think that that dinner Friday night is on the Bethel Community Forum. Um, mm -hmm. Well, let me ask Kelly to do a little bit more digging. Maybe she she's fairly versed in Facebook, but maybe she could reach out to somebody who has a Facebook page that's a business and see... If there's right. other opportunities, Vermont, um, cities and towns has a Facebook page. Yeah, maybe she could talk to somebody there who, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe we just need to look. shut it's it down. Controls on it that you can. Maybe add. we just have to shut it down and then start a new one and and pick those controls. That was Kelly's impression. She felt like she couldn't because she was a business that she would have had to make those choices in the beginning. However, Kelly didn't start the Facebook page either. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no, none of the current employees started the page. So we're kind of, who well, I don't know. Yeah, it's Kelly, but she's saying there's certain things, at least in her understanding that she mm -hmm. can't do right now, but I'll just task her with maybe reaching out, but VLCT is a good, they, you know, like yeah. you said, that's a good one. I'll have Kelly reach out to BLCT and um, yeah, whoever had, manages their page. Yeah, and if, if they've had any experiences like you're talking about. Yeah. 
yeah it's it's just it's crazy but it, it's just a little bit of a nuisance sorry right, we'll see what kelly can come up with and like i said i was i just wanted you to think about it um so i sent the fire department and road crew emails that i want to see their proposed budget by december 1st and um my plan is to have hopefully a budget only meeting on december 11th and i hope my hope is to have all the budget ready for you to see it all usually i give it to you in pieces but this year we may see it all at once um so tomorrow morning at 9 a.m i have a our our meeting for the water project um they have paved highland i think they're maybe we're paving graham um oh, oh good paved, graham yeah. street so they're going back and they're going to come back now to do all the um seeding mulch that sort of thing i think that aldrich and Elliot had just said you can't open up any more ground until you have this finished so that's where we are right now and so i don't imagine that they'll move into crystal do anything they may just wrap this up and be done for the winter i'm not sure i'll have more information tomorrow okay all right select board meeting minutes from the 23rd of october and the second of November. So can we do them separately just because I have some oh, comments so. from the lawyer for the second. So the 23rd of October, which was our normal scheduled meeting. Sounded like the meeting I attended. Mm -hmm. Derek said. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. Then November 2nd. So I sent them to the attorney and then um, he had some comments to some changes. Um, to do that he wanted done so i already i made them on the draft that i have so basically just continuing the select board i had said site meeting at right road at three he just said following inspection of the premises that start at the town office at 3 p.m and reconvened on right road you know very lawyerish um and he just clarified some some issues here um where i said to close these portions he was more specific um about continue, discontinue this section just a little more detailed as you'd expect from the lawyer so there was just a few changes uh that the lawyer recommended um okay. on the meeting minutes for the 11 2. are we able to approve them because the edits are minor or do we need to wait to see it in a i would packet? just i think you could approve them because they're minor he's really just it's semantics you know what i mean where we said if this had been a deed work formed, he was like, prepare a quick claim deed. It's attorney mm -hmm. Rue. It, it's really, so it's the just, gist of it. Maybe just get a motion to approve the, as, or yeah. to approve the meeting minutes as amended by the attorney, David Rue. Yep. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wait. <clears throat> also remind people that your taxes are due November 15th. Do this, yeah. this Wednesday. Good times, and we just got the water bill in the mail. I know. Bah humbug. I know. We're uh, awful. We're awful. Awesome. We're hateful people. Check the mail. <laughs> <Yeah>. Don't, <laughs> don't check, check it. I don't don't check it. It's in there. And hand it to me. Like, it's so in there, little right. note. Right. Right. Don't show up in the offices either. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got it. All right. Um, yeah, under any other business? Window dressers. Well, but we've got it. That's how you can do yours first, Ron. I just, I just wanted to share some, I've got some pictures of the, the making the window dressers window inserts uh, that I thought I would share. Uh, and so I don't want to necessarily take meeting time to do that, but if we get through the meeting and you want to see some pictures, the window dressers are custom made interior window inserts that uh, lower heating bills and they are available at a reduced price because the labor is provided by volunteers and uh, we've the town of Bethel is hosting it this year with the use of the town hall and uh, all of the volunteers are just singing the praises. Oh, nice! Of our town hall, with one exception. <laughs> <laughs> it's always one. But and that is the lighting is really bad. It is. If you're going to work at night, it's not it's not designed exactly. to be that. 
You're right. It is um, bad. It's not <laughs> designed night. to read. I mean, it's, 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 not, <laughs> it's, not, it's not. And is is it? It's not the bright. It's the fixtures itself. It's not the. There's a code that says lumens and candle um, candles. It's how many lights you need in a public forum where you gather for a meeting. And there's plenty of light there to do that. If it was a library, a school, or an office, it would be different. Oh, because okay. number one, the height. Mm -hmm. And all you basically all you have to have is can I get in and can I get out without stepping on somebody? Wow. I never thought I didn't realize so that that it's it makes sense. It's a code. So I that's, didn't realize that. That's, that's interesting. Minimal. Uh but is there anything with LEDs that prevents us from going brighter? More yep. Yeah. We got the biggest, brightest LED, LED bulbs in there we could get. Okay. Dave did them recently. <laughs> but for, for something like this, you could probably bring in job site lights that would give you some extra light. So, so, bring your own lights. Well, <laughs> or if you knew you were hosting this again in the future, you bring right. the call out we to local contractors. Hey, do you have a light or two you could loan so for a few I'm, days? I'm just, yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's I'm just how much room do you have? How much room do you need to do something like that? Uh, the only reason I'm saying that is school has all new lighting systems and the school's it not is. available because we're using it constantly. Oh, it's, it's during the day, day right? During yeah. the day, it's it's, yeah. it's. I didn't know if, like, if you were going to do it for like a, a few days or weekend or something like that, it, you could probably house doing it there. It for seven days. One, the first day is set up. The the last day is tear down. Mm, but there's gotcha. five days of construction. Okay, so, so that won't be, work then. Other thing while I'm thinking about it is that one of the side lights is out. On the outside of the building. No. No, inside. Inside. Oh, gotcha. The wall lights. Yep, yep. And one or two of them in the hall above the stairway <laughs> are out. It's never easy. All right, Dave. <laughs> no, Dave. Dave. No, Dave. And Dave. Okay. Dave. 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 The mm -hmm. door closer on those that goes. The door that goes downstairs to the kitchen. Yep. That arm is separated. It needs a bolt. Okay. Uh, I just. Yeah, no, it's I fine. I, I also do the like, building maintenance. So I'm so like, huh, oh, why don't we get to do I, this? <laughs> I'm, I'm noticing those. Town things hall. Saying, no, thank I you. I just need to report this is what we're finding when we're in there. Yeah, no, thank you. So I'm going to say lights out. So. It's but no not, balloons up in the fans right now. Nope. But we are seeing um, 25 volunteers a day. Wow, that's amazing. Coming through there and doing these inserts. We're building 245 inserts for 40 people. Nice. Um, the average savings is about $400 a year on your fuel bill. Last year's prices. Wow, no kidding. That's amazing. Nice. So... That's terrific. And we don't turn anybody, as I said earlier, we don't, nobody is turned away because they can't afford to pay for it. We should have had some made, that should have been your rental price. We should have had you make them for town hall while you're in there. Make them, uh, <laughs> we could make them for town hall except for the curve. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. But mm -hmm. some town offices are putting them in. And Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so terrific. That's, that's that. I encourage you to look at the pictures. Sorry, folk on social media. They're out there. On they're all gone. They're, they're all gone. They all went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, um, but looks at it later. Mm -hmm. And then, and another piece of business is the next meeting. Uh, Scott, I hope we'll be Scott. Uh, from Putney. Energy Committee. Putney. Putney will be here to talk about the IREC proposal. Okay, well make sure he emails me to get an appointment. And and, and you'll you'll see that you've been following the stuff in the Isn't that what was that what was in the packet? That was your was proposal. Packet, okay, yeah. But there's you know, we've um so that's really progressing, and we're at a point where we're wanting to uh, pin down 
the towns about continued in. I was say, I thought I read where you had a couple drop out already. We the original group grouping. We had out of fourteen. We've had several, four, I think, who have been really, really, really inactive. We're going to go back to them one more time and just see. But they were so small, frankly, uh, that it's not going to make any any real difference. Well, it helps on the paying. Uh, well, not, but salary. It, yeah, yeah, but not, pretty serious salary. <laughs> uh, but any, it, so anyway, we, but. Well, all that information will be here next week. Well, next tell him he needs to email me to get an appointment. I, I might not be away, but I'll create an agenda when I come back on Wednesday. And um, so then everybody, if you haven't had a chance to read this, then read it thoroughly because it sounds like you'll be revisiting it. And I know there was some talk about uh, Harry at Two Rivers. Them, there was no grant money for this. And I was approached by Two Rivers about that. And then it ended up that that, I think fell through, but I'd offered whether or not we were going to be the town to sponsor it, this, that, and the other. And then that kind of fell through. <clears throat> so first, so uh, very quickly where there is no grant money, but for a pilot project, the towns are able to use their Merck grant, Merck grants. The $4,000. $4,000. Yep. So we've got eight towns that have said, that they had applied for the MERP funds and that can that's so that's thirty two thousand dollars that could go to it for the first year. Second, uh, but there will be lots more details. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. And okay, all right. You want to go to right road? <laughs> sure. So I'll read them. Longest run on sentence in the history of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the board had the board had met prior um, to the meeting today. So, um, so the, the motion to find that the public good, necessity, and convenience of the inhabitants of the town of Bethel warrant discontinuing the nine hundred in 50 foot plus or minus foot section of class three portion of the town highway number 19 right road right away northernly of the turnaround near the right farm barn as well as the plus or minus 0.48 mile class four portion of the town highway number 19 right road right of way that extends from the end of the class three portion of Bethel Rochester municipal boundary line. And I have the extra one of that. I was going to give it to Julie. There you Thank go. You. No. Um, no, I don't have this word. This I just got from the lawyer. So, yes, ma'am. So that would be the motion is to discontinue. Um, that portion of the road as as said. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Comment. There were no Can I see objections that one? raised. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. And then we'll have, I can't remember the... So I'm going to forward the, it to the lawyer and he yeah. will, I'll send it to Dave Rue and then Dave Rue will craft the, um, we have to have it lodged with the town clerk, clerk. by December 31st or December 30th. Yeah. So he will draw up those paperwork and um, then I'll notify the people that were at the meeting, what the decision was. Yeah. Um, I'll do that tomorrow. And then we have had a couple people who have um requested a quick claim deed so um this office will draft those as well okay all right any other business to come before the board tonight past dave's time dave's yeah. sleeping I'll, I'll be able to quit whenever i want next <laughs> two or three that's right <laughs> anything else nope move to adjourn okay Second. All right. Well, have a good night, everybody. Yeah, you too.